Good evening and welcome to the Select Board Board of Health Sewer Commissioner's meeting of October 16, 2024. Uh, this meeting will be held in a hybrid fashion with the opportunity for both in-person attendance and remote participation. Please note that while an option for remote attendance and or participation is being provided as a courtesy to the public, the meeting hearing will not be suspended or terminated if technological problems interrupt the virtual broadcast unless otherwise required by law. Members with particular interest in any specific item on this agenda should make plans for in-person versus virtual attendance accordingly. The meeting will be held in the main in, in person in the main meeting room of the Deerfield Municipal Offices in accordance with Mass General Law Chapter 30A. Anyone intending to record the meeting must identify themselves to the clerk, Blake Gilmore, and provide their name and address for the record. Call the meeting to order at 6.02 p.m. <clears throat> and um, it's been suggested that since we're having a presentation about sewer rates that maybe what we should do is suspend comment and then allow people to ask questions after the presentation since that might be more meaningful. So um, if you, you two agree. Yeah, that makes yeah. sense because I want to have more of a conversation tonight. So we will have comment after uh, the presentation about um, the sewer rate uh, discussions. So at this point, I'd like to ask Dave Prickett to come up, identify yourself. Good evening, welcome. Thank you, appreciate it. Dave Prickett with DPC Engineering. Um, I've got copies of a handout with the permission of the select board. I sure. can leave these here and make them melt. Sure, the that would be great. So just by way of background, um, we were asked to take a look at what where the fy 25 sewer rates need to be based on the budget that was approved by the town at an annual town meeting for wastewater um, thank you chris thank you <laughs> there's a copy no, of the presentation legible. that i'm i'm going over uh on the overhead as well um where we started was we looked back at what happened last year in fy 24 what your budget was what the usage was for wastewater customers to try to look at things moving forward. Um, one thing that came to light last year um, was uh, billings were down. So we drilled in to try to understand why they were down. So last year, FY24, you had your lowest uh, sewer use consumption over the past 10 years. Um, that was a bit of an anomaly, uh, but you can understand when the majority of your revenue stream is based on consumption, Yep. revenues were down. Um, so looking forward to FY25, we assumed that the consumption in 25 would be the same as it was in 24. I don't want to call it a worst case scenario, but it was the lowest that you had seen. Uh, yeah. The challenge was the year before that, you had the highest that you'd seen. Right. So we're in like this back and forth where summers are either really hot or really wet. And I think it's just a cyclical thing that'll come through. But moving forward, we'll kind of plan on the the low end for usage, that way we won't miss the revenue mark. Right. So you had a approved budget um, back at annual town meeting for FY25. And what we did first was, and maybe Chris, if you could flip to that second page. Sure. This may be where, uh, Blake, this is probably where I lost you the other day. You did. Yeah, this is the engineer and me being the engineer. Um, essentially, you decided how big of a pie to order when you set your budget for FY25. Right. Our job is to now give you the options for how to slice that pie. So you have a current rate structure that you've had for several years, which includes a base service fee per billing period, a minimum consumption charge, and a fixed dollar per thousand gallon mark. Over the past probably four to five years, um, you've changed that dollar per thousand gallons, and those other two numbers have stayed where they are. Can I uh, add one more bit of information just kind of for setting the mark? Um, we set sewer rates in the fall. We do our budget months earlier. Um, so, and we're, we're, when, we set our, when we set our budget, um, we're kind of looking at, uh, you know, I guess each year we set our rates and we look at projects we're going to do, get a new truck for the thing, you know, what kind of capital we're going to do. So it's kind of, you know, sometimes you, you set a budget and you're planning for that year. Here you're setting rates later on to kind of 
take a snapshot of where you where your consumption was and stuff. So it's kind of always looking backwards and looking forward a little bit. It's odd odd timing. It's yeah, sometimes kinda, you're chasing your tail. Sometimes yes. you're yeah, but yeah. um, but that is municipal yep. water wastewater. There, it, it's inevitable. It's hard to get a, get around it. There's no yep. ideal scenario where you can set your budget and your rate before consumption starts. It's just right. a cyclical process that yep. works itself through. Thanks, Trevor. Sure. Anybody else want to chime in? But, and I should just say that this is pretty informal, so yeah. please feel free to chime in as we're, as we're going. Um, so we did a slightly different analysis this year than we've done in years past because we missed the mark on the revenues last year. We took your database. Um, your town staff does an amazing job with the data, uh, very easy to use. You know, We do this in a lot of communities and yours was one of the easiest sets of data to work with. Um, but we wanted to analyze where every customer is at today in terms of how much they pay per year for sewer and show how each of those customers is impacted both at the low end and the high end of usage. We looked at three rate alternatives this year. Um, the first was, let me take a step back. You're, go ahead, Tim. Yeah, I just, before you get into that, so I don't interrupt your flow, I want to just go back to the first page. You don't have to go back to the first page there, but under anticipated FY 2024 usage, it's 80, 85 million mm -hmm. gallons, 85.4. And was that based on the the highest year we ever had is that why you put that number in and then the actual came in you know 10 million or almost 11 million gallons less i don't think we'd ever really put a ton of thought into it right. prior to this year okay. we just kind of used the previous year's consumption yep and tried that to seems just, logical yeah right but that's the box right so i mean yeah. in the last 10 years it's been between 74 million and 85 so we've now right. We have a low year and a high year. They just had to be back to back, which is the worst case, you know, <laughs> right. formula. Okay, yeah, for yeah, certainly for revenue. It's a yep. great, yep, yeah, great point. Okay, thank you. I think one other thing while we're you know still back on page one or setting the table is that obviously your budget's gone up over the past several years, and a large part of that is now your debt from the wastewater treatment plant project in South Deerfield mm -hmm. is on the books. Right. So. A significant part of your budget is now fixed, the debt service, the mortgage mm -hmm. payment for the treatment plant. Um, and that leads to a higher, you know, obviously overall budget. But in a second, I'll get to why that's maybe important to consider looking at the overall rate structure. Yeah. Because, you know, you had pretty low minimum charges per billing period going back and they hadn't been changed over the last six or seven years. And that might be something that helps us bring that base out without continually raising the dollar per gallon per right. gallon charge. Yep. Okay. So this graph that, that Chris so kindly put up on the on the overhead, um, the blue dotted line represents FY24. So it's a statistical analysis from mm -hmm. the zero through hundredth percentile. You know, back in the day when we were graded on a curve and stuff, this shows where everyone was at. The median, the vertical red line shows, you know, where 50% of the data points are lower and 50% are higher. Not necessarily the average, but right, right. in the middle of the data points. Yep. Um, in FY24, the average uh, uh, monthly cost for sewer was 75 bucks. And these are just single family homes shown on this graph. Right. So we pulled out all of the larger commercial properties. And generally speaking, the folks behind me are, you know, single yep. family homes that often come to the discussions for these. Sure. Yep. The three rate structures that we took a look at, the first one was similar to past years, just adjusting the, you know, the dollar, the dollar per, uh, uh, per, per thousand gallons. Yep. And under that scenario, we maintained the service fee of $100 per billing period, the minimum charge of $80 per billing period, and the usage rate goes up from 2094 to 2445 per thousand gallons. Yep. For alternative two, we took a different approach. We left the usage rate at 2094 and tried to back into what would the minimum fee need to be raised to. And it would have to go from 100 bucks to $225 per billing period as a minimum fee. Yep. And under that one, the, uh, the minimum usage charge stayed at 80. So go ahead, Tim, please. So just, just to be clear, um, what is the billing period you're talking about? And 
Is it a monthly thing? Is it a quarterly thing? Is it a you six do, month? You do your invoice. You send out your bills twice a year. Right. Yeah. So, so I think they're May and November, if I'm not so mistaken. So mm -hmm. if we have two bills a year, that means that they're going to have two $225 charges yep. per year? Yes. Yep. Okay. Yep. yep. Just wanted everybody to be understanding because yep. it yep. can be confusing. Oh, yep. sure. It's, it's definitely a lot of moving parts. It, yeah. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Yep. The the third kind of alternative that we looked at, probably not surprisingly, is how do you mesh the two to maybe come up with a one that's right. a little bit more palatable. And for alternative three, um, we came up with a minimum service fee going from 100 to 150 bucks per billing period. Yeah. And a minimum charge going up from 80 to 100 per billing period. And the rate then goes from 20.94 20, 20 to 23 even. Right. Um, that's the green sorry that's the uh the purple line in the middle so all three of these options lead to a balanced budget based on the approved budget at annual town meeting without Not, capital projects without any additional right. you know considerations of things that as you've done in the past things come up midstream right. and you analyze whether that's something that you want to take on in that fiscal year or not and right. i'll talk about those in a second but yep. um we believe that alternative three might be might be most appropriate but with that said none of them yeah. are wrong right as mm -hmm. sewer commissioners you can you know choose any of them and i think in our discussion um you know prepping for some of this data we were thinking because a lot and i think you hit on this earlier because the a lot of our costs right now are fixed um you know we're paying the debt service on on the work that maybe the you know the service fee and the minimum usage charge would, would increase a little bit and not as much on the usage um, per thousand gallons. Yep. <clears throat> so when somebody gets their, their every six month bill, there is, let's just pick all this, this what's currently in a, they get their $100 charge twice a year. Yep. They get a minimum charge if they don't exceed usage. Correct. Yep. So if they have more usage than the minimum charge, that doesn't show up on their bill. Correct. Right. Okay. And then the rest of the bill is based on how many gallons of water went through their, their system. Yes. And okay. What's not shown on the, any of these alternatives, Tim, is we didn't touch the, I guess you have like a built-in abatement where if you're- We do. You know, if you're winter- Sorry, if your summer usage is more than 125% of your winter usage, it's capped at it's bait. 125. Yeah. We didn't change right. that. Um, yeah, we just left that alone. It's outdoor watering use. and Correct. Washing a car. We did look at what would happen if you changed it, and it's right. it's not worth it. It brings in like 10 grand extra revenue. It's, yeah. not, it's not worth it. Right. So yep. what we're trying to do with all of these alternatives is the 90-10 rule or the 5-95 rule, trying to make the rates work for the 90% of the customers from the fifth percentile to the 95th percentile, there's always gonna be customers in that zero to five percentile and 95 to 100 that there's always gonna be outliers. Yeah. You know, and obviously, as you can see from the graph, for Pretty seniors steady. that might not use a lot of water, raising the base fee, you know, it, it raises their rates the most in that lowest fifth percentile. It's just the reality, but that is the right. case already. Yeah. There are already people that, you know, are just paying the minimum charge per billing period. Yeah. Good. So the, our first order of business, you know, leading up to your rate hearing on the 30th is for the commissioners to consider which alternative or a new one makes right. the most Some sense for mix. you. We can synthesize something else. Yes. The, the, the model is, is cooked, so to speak. Yep. Um, and then beyond that, as we've done in years past, we, we took a look at some of the pending capital projects uh, that have been discussed and what those would look like. So on the third page of the handout, we just assumed alternative three was going to be the move forward alternative. Yeah. And for that scenario, we took a look at how much more would rates need to be under alternative three to go from approved FY25 budget. That would be alternative 3A. Yeah. Up to alternative 3B, which is 3A plus the the presumed debt service for the replacement sewer in Eastern and Cross, yeah. um, you know, a project that was that was bid last year and postponed because the bids came in, you know, higher than expected. There was only one bid. Right. Uh, it was. It just happens every once in a while. 
yep. kind of end, end of year project and not a lot of interest with people already with a good backlog and one person just kind of threw a number at it. So, yeah, but that's an option under 3B and 3C is um, essentially 3B plus um, the upfront cost associated with um, the replacement affluent pipe at South Deerfield. So right. I, again, these are just, we've tried to give you like the menu and you yeah. can order off the menu and understand what those implications would have on cost. Right. And really just looking at, you know, what we have to do. Um, I mean, we, we the, the town still has an immense amount of sewer work to do. You know, we, yes, we have a very well built plant, um, but all the infrastructure leading to that plant, not all. A lot of it in some areas of the town are, are in a lot worse shape. We have gotten a grant for the asset management plan. So over the next year or so, we'll be putting cameras in every pipe that leads to both plants and seeing what the conditions are. We did this back in 2017, I want to say. Um, and that's what gave us the basis of, you know, planning the upgrades at the plants. Um, and, you know, eventually we chose to, to upgrade fully the South Deerfield plant. We have, um, so we have pipes to do all over town. We, we have been trying to get the project on Eastern and Cross done because we wanted to get the paving done. And we got, I know a lot of that can be lined. So we paved a lot of that, or maybe not yet. <laughs> Short, shortly, we've milled a lot. Uh, but I think that's going to be paved shortly. But then there are other areas that where we need to dig up and replace the pipe. So there's a cost to doing that work. Um, you know, each year we put some money aside for engineering and you know small repairs in, in the budget but not enough to do large projects so um so the plan is do, do we tackle one of those this year we have a, and then we have a ton of work on other pipes around town that need to happen there's a ton of work going up pine nook road unfortunately that all got you know unfortunately the sewer pipe stayed poorly okay on the left side of the road where the rest of the road got taken out so um so we didn't get the opportunity to replace all that at the time we didn't have the money anyways but um so we do have i mean that's probably that hill probably has the worst pipes in the town as far as i remember from the last report um we have been replacing certain pipes going down to the um the old deerfield plant and da has been gracious to fund a lot of that project um over the last several years we've replaced and, and lined uh, several pipes leading down to that plant, but we, we have a lot of work to do other places. So it's trying to kind of come up with, you know, how to keep the rate stable, uh, but still, you know, not put off this work because it gets more expensive every every year, every time we go bid it. Um, it, it just never gets cheaper in the long run. So, so and then the, the sure. other one large project is the effluent pipe that leads out of the plant. Uh, some people wonder, like, why wasn't that done on a on a twenty two million dollar upgrade? It 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 just wasn't part of the project. We didn't really have a need to replace the pipe because it wasn't washed out. You know, it's the it's the pipe that leads out to the plant. And I'll talk about that a little bit further. But those are really the two major things that we're looking at. How do we get financing? We've got you know bids out to SRF uh, State Revolving Fund to see about help and their low low interest loans. But I'll I'll talk about that a little bit later. But just those are kind of the projects we have at the moment. We purchased the truck last year that uh, that just got um, delivered with the plow. So they'll be doing a lot of the plowing at both plants now. Um, and uh, and the and the project's pretty pretty much done. We have a few. We're going to do arborvitaes around the project, but we'll be able to pull that out from the from the budget that we have. And uh, we're looking at light sensors as well down there um, to try and kind of dim the lights certain times of the night. Um, but that again can be, I think, pulled out of the budget. So not, not a pro capital project. So just to talk about, um, the various alternatives on the second page, um, and clarify. So all three A is, is essentially, um, is that the same as, as yep. all yep. three over here? It is. Okay. Yep. So it's called the Alt 3A for no particular reason. Just well, just I'll so you can differentiate. Leave it to an engineer to change page three from page well, two. But yeah. <laughs> Alt three, uh, page three is just showing the three right. Yeah, alternates. Yeah. So on this page, Alt 3A is 
what the alternate three the was on the previous page. Yep. Right. Yep. Three B, how much money is included in that for the anticipated cost of the work on Eastern and Graves? That's essentially the work that's added into this one. That's correct. So the the budget for Eastern and Cross is about a half a million. Again, we, you're going into that without knowing what the rebid might look like. So we just carried the bid from the first phase plus a small contingency. Um, and that's basically a, uh, you know, represents a financing charge. So the thought there is that you could complete that project prior to June 30th. And uh, at which time you could close a loan or a debt, you know, however you want to finance that uh, locally, mm -hmm. you could do that. No, we assumed like a 4% interest rate. So it's pretty like liberal financing scenario there. Sorry, Blake. No, that's, that's all right. Um, so there was a problem with water in that area as well on cross street. So was that something that was mitigated so that the pipes could be laid to be put in there? There were replacement water mains that were placed in that neighborhood first. Mm -hmm. Um, and on the heels of that, I don't want to speak for, for Kevin, who's now enjoying retirement, but I believe the intent early on was before you pave, let's replace the bad sewers and save the money of the pavement, mm -hmm. you know? So that started, Kevin had some pipe that was available at the yard. The town was trying to contribute that. Um, and then the third piece that came in, Blake, was the, um, there's an existing culvert on Cross Street that's been, had a history of problematic drainage and stuff. And right. as part of the permitting, uh, the Conservation Commission requested that that culvert be upgraded as part of the project. So not surprisingly, every time you peel the onion and get down a layer, you know, a couple little new things get added, but. Right, okay. So uh, this is not directed at you, but I just wanna ask a question. Would somebody who's here by Zoom tell us how we are coming over the, uh, are you able to hear us? Like maybe Julie Chalfont, you would chime in. Maybe they can't. They can hear you just fine. Oh, good. Okay, good. I just wanted to make sure that FCAT was getting our voices because um, uh, I got a text saying speak up. So I just wanted to, to make sure that people could hear. Okay. No, hear everybody just fine. Can you show um, page two also? I, I assume this is page three we're looking at this being shared. Yes. Yep. There you go. Thanks. Yep. Sure. Thank you. So is there any other money in Alt 3B that other than the approximately 500,000 for the pipe work? No. Okay. No. So that would, that would sort of address the immediate sewer pipe problems in that, that area mm -hmm. if, if we were to uh, adopt this, this scenario. And then in Alt 3C, I just want to clarify, that's just 3B plus design for fixing the effluent pipe. It's not for fixing the effluent pipe. No, just design and permitting. Okay. Which presumably, if SRF funds the project, they'll provide financing for construction phase, but they won't provide financing for design. Okay. That's normal. <clears throat> and is it too early to tell us approximately what that pipe will cost to put it into the river? I honestly don't remember off the top of my head, but I it thought like it was like two around two, two million and bucks. Yeah. It was two to two and no. a half. And that does include work being done in the river itself? Mm -hmm. It does. So the reason I kind of hesitated there is some of the costs may be driven by what the permitting entities require of the town. Right. So when we had done the treatment plan upgraded, they wanted to make sure we weren't doing any work near the river because they were concerned about like sturgeon, you know, yeah. and yeah. Uh, their cavities are sensitive to pressure. Um, there's, I think, other species along that bank that, that may necessitate a different construction approach than we want to do. Right. You know, so I, it's, it's premature, but I, as always, I've tried to be on the conservative side with early estimates so right. that we don't. So you know, we come down. COVID aside, get to the point where we miss the mark. Yeah. Right. And the, the other and the other part of that, so it's not just replacing the pipe. What the, the problems that kind of came were were all that rain and, and the flooding up and down, up and down on the river this year. But um it, it's also the drainage out of that plant and the areas around it. So the water coming out of the plant, you know, draining out to the river eroded 
the embankment, which then eroded the pipe and broke the pipe. So um, our thought process for doing this is not just replacing the pipe leading from the plant from the clean sewer water out to the river. It's actually tying in most of the drainage from the plant into that same line, if I have this right. Yeah. And then that all goes out to the river in one pipe instead of one stormwater pipe and one effluent pipe. And that way, if we get a lot of high water, things start backing up, we can turn on, I have been told, called Big Bertha, some big pump. That is and, Eric's baby. Yeah. <laughs> Eric's baby. And then that will flush, uh, that will push the water out into the river and we won't have to worry about flooding of the plant or back, backing up if we have a serious flood situation, which pray we don't have. But, um, but it would just kind of funnel all the water into one pipe leading out instead of m multiple pipes at the moment, which I think caused a lot of the issue along with the flooding of the river. And so, just older older infrastructure too so the question i have on that was that erosion something that was happening over time or was that just because of that heavy rain that we got that particular one time we didn't notice it at all until we were at our last meeting and then somebody heard water fall on the bank i don't think we've ever noticed it kevin never mentioned it's, it it's hundred year old pipe yeah um it was all there was never too. any visible signs of any failure the pipes in a location you couldn't even like tv it it's, right it's pretty it's pretty tricky it wasn't until probably after those crazy rains and the river was way up and then came back down that all at once yeah you know a little cavity let go in between the last manhole and the river and yep. then the big sinkhole was visible and now flows are low and someone could hear the, right. the cascade yeah so when you go to replace this thing, is there some way of telling that if this is going to start to happen again, that you're going to be able to take care of that? Well, the, the idea is that we this would all be in one pipe now. So you wouldn't have that other pipe kind of eroding as stormwater on top of the yeah. other pipe. I think just the way those pipes were laid way back in the day. It's, you know, it's 12, it's 12 inch clay pipe. I yeah. mean, it's like, it's like pottery with right. three foot sections right, right now. Those. And, so, and I, yeah also yeah. believe um you know i think originally there was like a you know, not a pump house not a house but just the end of the pipe had a structure that in the early i don't know how early 70s that was put in i think and then an ice storm took it out shortly after that and then so it was just the pipe kind of there so there's been issues over the over the years with like the end of the pipe but the middle from from the plant to there it was buried no issues no no concern it was always draining fine no reason to kind of tackle it or throw money at that when we did the upgrades we would have done something else not no, I mean, that, we not passed that. like over a million gallons a day through the plant yeah during the highest flow we's, we've ever seen yep um and no the plant issue. handled it you know yep. eric and the guys handled it glowingly Right. It's just all the stormwater, the river, everything's kind of flowing from south to north there off that field mm -hmm. coming at the plant, mm -hmm. you know, and it and it's Deerfield. Groundwater it is. is like four feet below grade everywhere. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, you know, it's just sitting in that hit it hits that bowl mm -hmm. and then it's gotta go somewhere. It is that's that's that it that field, that farm field right next to the plant in that corner, that northern corner of that field is really gets wet. I mean it's it's generally where the crops don't grow the best there for sure, because it's yep. always wet. And then so we take all that on our property. People might be wondering, well, if you just have to put a pipe under the river, why would it cost so much? But <laughs> can you talk about the requirements like EP, EPA probably has requirements like you have to go out and pour a big cement footing to put the pipe in? I'm, can you talk about that a little bit? Again, I think some of the permitting requirements, Tim, I don't know yet. They'll be driven by species of concern. Okay. But essentially out in the river, we'll have to build a cofferdam around the head wall. You either have two options. You can either put a head wall or you can put a vertical diffusing structure in. You had a vertical diffusing structure. I like the head wall because mm -hmm. to Blake's point, you can see it. So mm -hmm. you said, how do you like know what's going on? Well, if I'm opening the manhole at the top of the hill and I can mm -hmm. see the end of the pipe, visually, I kind of know what's going on. Mm -hmm. So that's what we'll try for. And then obviously we want to put as much like riprap on top of it, Tim, as we can. Right. So, But sometimes they don't like that because the turtles can't you know, mm -hmm. come up over the rock. So now we're putting vegetative. It's a it's a permitting give and take. We want to. We're engineers. We want to fortify it and right. you know make this thing uh, as 
proof as it can be to storms. Right. But but there's that part, Tim, and then you'll have to do bypass pumping to get around that during construction. Um, and this question you may not be able to answer, but when it comes to the different species, I know that when projects have been done in the past in different water sources and that sort of thing, that species were actually moved. They had people come in that were specialized in moving the species out of the area so that you get the work done. And sometimes they replaced them, sometimes they just moved them to a new habitat. Is that still in yeah. tech or is it yeah. something that we just have to work around no, we, them and leave them there? I had to do it with turtles a long time ago up in yeah. Williamstown. Okay. Someone literally came in with scuba gear and I don't know what kind of turtles they were, but he was going after them. And then other times it was some kind of weird like little mollusk or something freshwater mm -hmm. and we had to do the work between November and April when they were dormant or right. non-breeding, if right. you will. So yeah, no, you're you're right. I mean, that's kind of the stuff they put the handcuffs on you. And, yeah, right. and yeah, you, you can this, fix it, but you got to salmon runs and stuff. You got a time around it, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's so that tricky. would be in a future in a in a future iteration. We would be looking to include that in this calculation, whatever cost that is. In the presumably, future. the debt service would hit you in either the end of twenty six or the beginning of twenty seven. Mm -hmm. That would be my guess. And that would be amortizing whatever that loan is Tw over whatever period twenty year of time, note, two percent. Yep. yep, yep, you got it. They forgive some of it, not a lot. But. I think I think you're in the tier two. I think it's six point six percent. It's yeah. like they take the car payments off the back of the loan when right. it's just principal, yep. so it doesn't help up front right. with the mortgage mm -hmm. payment, but. In years 18, 19, and 20, it's it's real. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, have you two, do you have anything more to talk about, Trevor? I, I don't. No, I'm I happy to answer up. questions and, if people yeah, have. Just, yeah, yeah. Sure, um, if well, if people here. have questions of Dave Prickett, can you just address them to the chair and then we'll have him respond? So anybody who wants to ask a question. And that anybody online as well? Okay. Welcome, Jeff. Good evening, Jeff Upton, uh, Hillcrest Ave. And just one question for Dave, but I do have a few questions for the select board after, sure. if possible. Yeah, of course. So, uh, very quickly, Dave, do you happen to know the daily flow capacity of the plant? I believe it's 0.85 MGD, if mm -hmm. I recall. You're right. I won't bet the farm on that, but I'm pretty sure. <laughs> okay, and could you tell us what the daily flow average is for Deerfield now? Uh, Eric would probably be able to better tell you. Um, I'm gonna guess right now, it's probably right, wow. three to 400,000 gallons a day. I mean, right um, now, it hasn't been Yeah, I mean, last year, a year ago this time, you yeah, had right. flows that were pushing a million gallons for two or three months, which is at the other extreme. Uh, okay, yeah. so even if it's a million gallons, that capacity is still, if we're like 8.5 million, so. No, 0.85. 0.85. 0.85, okay, so 850,000 right. gallons a day. But we yeah. can do more. So we can do more. Just we're right. not permitted for more on a, it's, right. average, right? The 0.85 is an average, you can, that plant can handle more. But if it was more more than six months out of the year, we'd have to ask for a different permit, I assume. Have I got that right? Or? Correct. I think it's 180 days. If it's over 80%, you have to yeah. reevaluate. Okay. Yeah. No, thank you. I, I do appreciate that. Sure. <clears throat> Does that capacity then allow for, say, a holding tank for separate users to tie into that? The uh, the South Deerfield plan is not designed for septage. It's it's still a relatively small plant. Um, we had talked about the option of accommodating septage receiving when when we were doing the design phase, um, and we all agreed that it wasn't worth the capital or the increased operational costs. Um, okay. Again, I'm kind of going back in a time machine here, but um, right. I certainly wouldn't recommend that this facility, it's not designed to accommodate septage receiving. You could, you, it, but you, you, you could, you'd have to engineer um, it. You then would just have, then that would prompt 
the solids handling upgrade, which you've been able to avoid that. And, you know, you've been really efficient w with stretching out that infrastructure. So, you know, right. you could accommodate it, but then your O&M costs drive up. And I think the consensus that came up back a few years was that um, the cost of the homeowners of being able to bring septage there, you know, would have been higher than just having it brought to a larger facility. Right. Well, I, I, I've checked on that a little bit and that, and, and, you know, I'm just trying to understand this because uh, uh, right now with septic people, most companies are charging roughly about, or most towns, I should say, are charging roughly about 20 cents a gallon as far as a disposal fee. The town residents of those towns are charging their residents like nine cents or 11 cents per gallon for disposal fee. So what my concern is that around probably four or five years ago, maybe a little bit longer, what was happening is the haulers in this area were getting limited. They were hitting quotas. Uh, these disposable places were putting quotas on them and they were only allowed to take so much. And that was putting a little pressure on as far as timing of your septic tanks getting uh, pumped and then being able to have some place to dispose of it. And it's eased up, I've checked, and it's eased up the last couple of years, but I'd hate to see us get back into that situation and have, you know, well, you know we have roughly about 60% of the people here in Deerfield on septic tanks. I would hate to get us into a situation where our uh, residents didn't really have any place to dispose of their waste. So that's the only reason why I'm talking about a holding tank, what's the feasibility. And I know that we have a project that's probably going to be coming up in old Deerfield and seeing how uh, septic tanks, majority of them probably get pumped from spring to fall. Uh, and the students are out from late spring to early fall. Maybe they could handle that capacity maybe <clears throat> in the future. And I'm just throwing that out. That's okay. Uh, that's good. Okay. Um, before you continue, is there anybody online that wants to ask a question? Because I'm happy to listen to you, oh, Jeff, sure. all night. Yeah. I just want to make mm -hmm. sure that other people aren't. Yep. Yeah. Okay. No, I agree. Doesn't look like anyone is raising their hand. So continue. Okay. The only other thing that I have is, and it's not so much for David, it's just for us here mm -hmm. in town is uh, there seems to be some confusion. And I've got a few quick questions here that might be able to, uh, sure. you know, to help eliminate Great. that. And it may sound basic to you people because you're dealing with it every day, but, but a lot of residents aren't yep. dealing with it every day. So Absolutely. Uh, just, just if a quick explanation of, of how users and non-users are assessed and billed and sure. I, you know, I, yep. I understand that, but the other part of it is, and maybe Julie can weigh in on this, is the covering of the costs of the municipal buildings as far as the flow in the operating sure. budget issue. So, yep. So, yeah. So again, we set a set a rate each year with a hearing, um, and that is that is coming up with as we all discussed here tonight the the cost for a basic. Um, you know, your hookup charge and your, um, if you just use minimal usage charge, and then how much per thousand gallons uh, we need to charge to cover the bill. That, that rate and that bill gets based on how much water usage you've brought into your home in the last six months. Since the last time the water department read it, we decide, um, you know, we, we see how much you, you have used. Most of whatever comes into the house goes out of the house, so we have to process it at the plant. So that, that becomes your bill. Every six months you have a bill based on your usage. And then um, that is if you're on, on, on the system. If you're not on the system, if you have a septic, you, you don't pay any of that rate. Um, so the only portion of money that the town currently pays as say myself who is not on the system the money that i pay into the sewer system was a um was 25 percent of the cost of the upgrade at the south deerfield plant 
Back in the 20s, when everything got put in, we had a law that said 25% of the bill would be of any capital project or laying the pipes or anything would be borne by the town and then 75% by the users. And that was the law uh, until I think 2020 or so. We changed that law maybe a little bit later than that. Yeah, I think it was a couple of years later. A couple of years later, uh, maybe 2022, we changed the um the language at town meeting, they decided that the town would no longer be <coughs> obligated to pay anything. They could on any specific project. The town could step up and pay a portion of any capital project, but baseline is that the sewer users would pay all of the capital. Um, so any new project that comes up, uh, it, it's really based on the sewer users and then the select board or sewer commissioners would decide if we would ask the town if they would participate um, monetarily in some of that. So the way, but you don't see that in your bill. Like when you get your taxes, obviously you see it because you're paying a tax bill, but it, there's no separate uh, portion on your tax bill that says, here's my $5 or $25 or whatever it might be that's going towards um, the loan payment this year. So each year we'll decide um, as a town and budgeting, we're going to pay so much on principal, so much on interest, and then pretty soon all the loans will be done and we'll have specific payments that we'll make each year for these projects. Um, when, when we do the bill, when we're doing the budgeting, the 75% um, of that loan payment comes out of the retained earnings of the sewer enterprise fund. Those are all the money that gets paid, goes into the sewer enterprise fund. 75% comes out of that. 25 comes out of the general fund, whatever that number is, um, that gets assessed. And that, that just becomes part of the budgeting process we do. And then you're, you know, everybody's taxes, they pay their taxes and that, that percent goes there. So you'll never see that on your budget or on your tax bill if you're a resident, but, um, it's one of those things that we debt excluded, which means that it was um, it was money that was over and above your normal tax bill. We that that money gets gets paid that way. So I don't know if that explained everything. I'm always happy to read. I say think, things again. again. I, th I think that has <laughs> definitely helped. And then the one last thing, just to clarify, mm. and I think you basically did at that point, but just in case. Yep. Uh, just explain the uh, assessment and billing and how it impacts users and non-use for infrastructure maintenance now, not yeah. new projects. Yeah, Just so the maintenance of the plant, like anything we do at the plant, change a light bulb, fix a pump, all of that does not come out of um, your tax bill. If you're a regular taxpayer in town, it comes out of each year we put a budget together like all other departments. The wastewater treatment department puts a budget together for how much they might think they need in maintenance for you know, a lot of the old stuff up at Old Deerfield, but anything at the new plant. Um, that All of those bills that are paid, uh, parts that we buy, chemicals we use all comes out of the sewer user fee. So it's nothing that the general taxpayer pays for O&M. It's called operations and maintenance. So uh, taxpayers don't pay any of that. Um, they only pay that 25% of the loan uh, right. that we're doing, but everything else is paid by your sewer user fees. Yep. And, and just, just to hear one thing, like it's not two buckets of people. You're all the same people. So right. you are a taxpayer and you are a sewer user. Right. So you're paying both. Like right. you're paying the 75% and you're paying the 25%. So the you're sewer right. users, you know, really are, are shouldering a lot of this. So that's kind of my two cents is I always think a town should have some responsibility in this. But yeah. um, anyways, yeah. No. Sorry. I mean, the bylaw change was... Previously, we were required to pay at least 25%. Now we are right. we are not obligated to pay anything. Right. Moving general, forward on new projects. But we could pay up to 25%. Right. Correct. Correct. And it, it, it makes a lot of sense in South Deerfield for mm -hmm. the South Deerfield Wastewater Treatment Facility for a, a, a resident uh, contribution because we have schools, we have fire department, we have mm -hmm. police department, we have the town hall. Um, the library, et cetera. So it makes sense that there's some component. Right. Whether 25% was the accurate number, that was what was required by law. Yep. But going forward, voters will decide, will come, you know, if we have to spend money on the old airfield plant, 
proposal will come to town meeting. It will say, this is what we're doing. This is what we're suggesting. Um, you know, when people will have an opportunity to debate whether we put any money into uh, any money into it from the general fund or we put 10 percent or 5 percent. Yeah. So that won't be decided by us. It'll be decided by the voters. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Julie, did you have uh, some comments or questions? I do. Um, maybe just to add a um, add a very small amount to what Trevor already said is that um, when we vote the municipal budget at annual town meeting, the amount we're going to pay towards that loan is in that budget and you can see it um, see it there as a line item. So it's not a surcharge that gets added later or anything. It's part of the budget that we vote Thank you. in April for the upcoming year. Um, but it, I have a question. Um, when you, because I'm, when you have the minimum charge for a sewer user, mm -hmm. is that like what defines a sewer user? Is something like is 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 Treehouse on the sewer and mm -hmm. are they a single user no matter how many bathrooms they may have? <laughs> or I, I just picked yes. that as an example or yes. Yankee Candle or yep. DA or whoever. Yes. Um Oh, go ahead if you want to. That sounds more. Can you can you speak to that better than us? Yeah, the user charge right now is per customer. Customer would have been a better way of stating this in writing. Mm -hmm. um, I think what Julie described is the concept of if it were per EDU, like equivalent dwelling unit. We've talked about that in the past as an option, but we didn't propose in this model any change to how a single customer. So there are customers that are much bigger than a single family home and they would pay the same base charge as somebody who's on sewer right. that has a two bedroom house or a three bedroom house. So there isn't a, like um, each, each like, yeah, and under an EDU system, you might have a DA or a public school, a, a school or something might have multiple hookup charges, you know, multiple EDUs, um, I forget what it equalized something around equivalent that. dwelling units, equivalent dwelling units, yeah. so, so many units, but here they would just pay that one minimum usage charge. And obviously a, a entity like that would never be a minimum charge. They would always, they have a lot of usage, so they pay a, a, a huge bill, yep. but, um, but yeah, it's, it's something we looked at EDUs and I think we still are struggling because it's hard to protect the senior citizens and yeah. the minimum people and also capture the funds you need out of the larger entities. Great Barrington has a 100% fixed fee sewer rate structure. So the positive to it is there's no variability with revenue, right? You have a dry year, a wet year, you're getting your revenue. The downside is if you're between the 0th and 50th percentile, like if you're down at the 0th percentile and you're fixed, a full fixed fee, your cost per year is going way up yeah so it's it's tough to switch a rate structure yeah. entirely once you have one you almost have to like live within that skin yeah and you can you can shed it and tweak it a little bit but you can't really completely morph into a different system without a lot of pain yeah and i don't know whether it's legal to have like a commercial user fee rate and um, a residential rate and we don't we currently have the same tax rate for commercial and residential so um that would add a layer of complication um but is that something that it yeah i don't want to speak to the legality but it's certainly um uh, allowed um there are a lot of communities with different rate structures some of them are ascending rate too you know if you don't use a lot of water you pay this much if you use a lot of water you know it goes up i would say the more complex we make it tim like then exactly. the more variability there is year to year. So we, we have been looking a bit at um, industrial use. You know, when, when Oxford Pickle was here, there was a heavy demand. The breweries can be a heavy demand depending on what, what goes down the pipe. So I think the breweries lately have been, you know, we, we had a tough time for a few years when a lot of hops and stuff was going in and you'd, you'd go to the plant and you just knew like smell hops everywhere. And like all the yeah, they had aeration a tanks are all foamed up and you're like, oh, what do we dump? You know, and but but they, you know, through education, they understand that a lot of that hops goes to the farm and, you know, that kind of thing. So they, they've they, but we still have heavier workload on the plants from a brewery versus a school or you know it's just a so we're looking at 
you know, do we have a, we, we used to have a different rate for, say, a BBC or something like that. Um, Treehouse doesn't brew here, but if they did brew here, you know, we really, I think there's, there's not that many entities, but we do need to, you know, th there's more wear and tear, more stuff going in the pipes. If you pop a manhole on, on Conway Street here, there's a lot of gunk in the pipe, you know, versus just, you know, off of Elm Circle or something, just different animals. So we looked at costs there a bit. We have some more work to do there. So, um, Julie, did you have a follow up? Your hand I have one up. more question. Okay. Um, the, do you know, like, how many users are there or customers or whatever? And then how many of those pay the minimum payment now? And how many would be paying the minimum payment? with the new, your option three there? That's a great question. I don't remember the exact number of customers. Brent, I think I saw Brenda come in. She might know off the top of her head. Um, yeah, I want to say there's like under 3,000 uh, total users, but I don't know. I know we have all that data in a spreadsheet, and I can get that for you for that, sure. That's close enough. It doesn't. Yeah. I can give you the percentile though. So everyone under the fifth percentile is paying the a no. flat charge. Everyone under the fifth percentile. Cur currently, yeah. yeah. So five percent of your customers are use so less water than, than your minimum charges. Yeah. Which that five ninety five rule, you guys are doing a good job with that. Yeah. If it was twenty percent, I would say we gotta be really careful because that's a lot of people that right. you know are in that that low low tier yeah i know it hurts to go up too it's just um you know as as stewards of this valuable um infrastructure we have to be careful and we have to invest where we need to um and and you know we we have to i sign the bills every two weeks blake as well he's been looking at them too and Tim as well. We, you know, every couple of weeks I'm signing the warrant and, and it's like $18,000 to bring our sludge to Lowell. It's just going up. And, you know, sometimes it's 12, sometimes it's 22. It's, but it's a lot of money every month to spend. And that's just one part of the enterprise. Um, it is ungodly expensive to get rid of our sludge and that the sludge is the dead bugs, right? Yeah, second biggest line item. Second biggest line item other than electricity was labor and labor. Electricity used to be way top, but with this upgrade, it's gone way down. So that that's been excellent. Um, but yeah, but the sludge is, is a fortune to get rid of. Um, so we're just always trying to find that balance and we need to we need to cover the cost to do it. But, you know, not take advantage. We just want to you know, we, we have done a huge investment there and that that was a lot to tackle. We do have to figure out we have concepts of a plan should i say that um in old deerfield and uh i think we're getting close to kind of getting started there and then um you know and then again we have all the pipes to deal with all the all the collections and we'll have a better idea what that looks like again in the future here with this with this grant i would just like and to say, say how many um how many users would be paying the minimum fee if you raise the minimum fee because that's got to increase the number right it would. It does a little bit, Julie. Yep. Maybe like one or two percent. Oh, okay. Yeah. Thank you. I'd just like mm -hmm. to say thank you for your oh, time. Sure. Your responses. Thanks for your questions. I think that may have helped clear up I some confusion. Hope so. Hopefully. Yeah. 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 Hopefully. Always. Thank always you. happy to talk, and it's complicated, and and yeah. obviously, you know, from year to year, we we have to make the adjustments necessary to finance what's what we've obligated the town for. I mean, the voters obligated the town for this by approving the plan to build this plant. So, you know, we are the ones that have to set the rates and have to rely on experts to tell us these are the options you have for setting the rates. Um, so, and it's it's a it's a really nice plant. I'm always happy to give anybody a tour anytime. I mean, this is a big. <laughs> who wants to go look at a sewage plant? But it truly is a pretty amazing uh, piece of equipment and. Eric and his team are fantastic operators. They really, really keep that place really clean and um, operating well. So very proud of our team. Deerfield should be proud. So this doesn't have a direct effect on tonight's discussion. And I'm going to try to wrap this part of it by 7 o'clock, which is another okay. five minutes. Yep. Um, but we did recently receive a grant.
to look at um, a possible interconnection with Waitley's uh, business district. Uh, Industrial. So yeah. if you want to talk about that a small amount, Christopher. Yeah, sure. Um, and Dave, I just sent you and Justin an email about it today, so I hope you had a chance to, to read it. But yeah, we were recently awarded just a $100,000 planning grant um, from the Rural Development Fund that the state has just to explore uh, road and wastewater connections with Waitley. And in particular, uh, you know, we have our um, industrial park right on the border with their industrial park. And so, you know, there was a question about, you know, they've got some potentially big users on that side. Is there an opportunity here to expand our distribution or collection system rather um, and take advantage of that and, you know, you know, have a win-win situation for Waitley and Deerfield? So, um, it's yeah. too early to say how that would shape out or DDIC is looking into it, uh, our DDIC uh, committee. And, um, you know, it would create new users, new user fees. It might help defer, you know, defray some of the cost of the town of Deerfield, but too early to say whether that will ever occur. Expanding the bottom, the denominators, you always said, the more users. Yeah, that's a cool opportunity. You know, as Chris is gonna say, the challenge is the pipe cost, right? Mm -hmm. Getting the infrastructure from, from where it is out to the end, but from a math standpoint with flow, it's a cool opportunity for both communities. So. And yeah. there's a buy-in, you know, have to yeah. buy in for the investment right. that we've had. Just like your new yeah. connections do. Mm -hmm. Right, and it's, it's, it's actually a finite area. It's basically your industrial park currently doesn't have sewer infrastructure. Ours is right next door and it does. So maybe it makes sense, maybe it doesn't. And hopefully this, this, this grant will help us figure that out. Good job to Chris. So, That's not easy to go get grants. So, so I've got one thing I'd, I'd mm -hmm. like to add to that. Now, one thing that I've been, I think I discussed with both of you at one point is that we come up with a committee, a sewer committee to actually work with all of these different moving parts that as we go through this, it seems like there keep, seems to be more and more as we go through that would report to us as the commissioners and uh, be able to uh, maybe keep us abreast a little bit more in a more timely fashion than basically hitting this once a year or whatever. And then that way we can stay up to speed on it because I know I need all the help I can get. Yeah. It's, so. a, it's a lot. And you know, right. I, I mean, I, you know, we had the committee a few years ago and they, they did good work and they got to a standstill. Like it, it was just kind of stuck in the mud because they're, you know, it's hard decisions. They don't want to be the one to say, Hey, you need to spend 19 million bucks. Um, but, or 22, um, but they did good groundwork and good research. We looked at a lot of EDU kind of discussions at that time. Um, and then I think, you know, it might also, you know, if it's not a committee, maybe, you know, expanding, it might take a bylaw thing, but expanding, you know, the representation on this board, you know, as a sewer commissioners, maybe it's, um, uh, maybe we we have a couple of spots added to this board that are that are I'm non, actually in favor that, that was the next thing I would that are up, non that we expand you know, this board to five members they can be stuff. users because i'm not a user uh i think none of us are right now and no. that can be the case and sometimes it is it's just a matter of who gets elected and where they right. live but um but to have some representation on on the board and um you know i just yeah i think it might be good to kind of look at that for sure. Yeah, the um, the previous committee sort of fell apart for various reasons. Um, they reached a point where policy decisions had to be made and um, people didn't agree with each other. And at some point in order to, I wasn't on it at this, t I wasn't on the select board then. This was five or six years ago. And uh, the decision was made, we got to move forward. <laughs> uh, otherwise the plant's gonna fall yeah. apart. And uh, so, you know that's the plus and the minus of of ad hoc committees is um you know when it comes time to make policy decisions it's you know time for the committee to you know pass along stuff and from my standpoint i stay involved in the sewer throughout the year in terms of like trying to keep my knowledge base up we have the old deerfield plant we're gonna have to con confront at some point so i think i saw charlene did you have your hand up oh great come on up Welcome. Kind of giggling at that. Um, I I just want to be clear about if you're a user. Mm -hmm. So if we did alternative three, the hybrid adjustment, we would have to pay three hundred dollars for a service fee. What 
What Wait. does that three hundred dollars? Because that's Where that what you? you said was only for six. Yeah, just yeah. that was only for six months, right? So, so can you introduce yourself and say where you live? Oh, I'm sorry. No, that's all right. I just I thought since you announced me, yeah. um, Charlene Glinsky River Road. Thank you. Um, yes. But we, my husband and I, own some property in town that is on sewer, so that's why I'm asking. Uh -huh. um, the service fee is three hundred dollars for the year. Yeah. What does that pay for? Pays it, well. It's a, it's a it's a base charge, right? That everybody pays, and that's towards your operations, okay. maintenance, loan. I mean, it's just it's your bottom line. It's your starting point, and then user fees come on top of that. So it makes everybody kind of buy into the system, no matter how much you use, and the, it's a level kind of charge, and then your usage comes on top of that. If I got that right. Yeah, and I would just echo that because almost 40% of your budget now is the debt service from the project. Even if the spigot shut off tomorrow and no one discharged any wastewater, you'd still have to pay your loan. Right. So the it's users essentially, the theory behind raising the base fee was to kind of match the increase in the percent budget for the debt service. It's like so much of the budget now is fixed regardless of how much wastewater individual homes use. So. Okay. You know, budgets maybe 10 years ago were, you know, operating budget was maybe a million two, something like that. Yeah, we're and, close to two now. And every dollar collected goes to the budget. It doesn't have like a tag to it for right. like a specific sub component. It just, it goes into the piggy bank and yep. Brenda and Sarah, you know, manage that accordingly. Pay the bills. And then the minimum charge, mm -hmm. that means if you do not flush your toilet enough, you'll get charged that. No, basically. it means everybody gets a minimum charge. So you have the hookup fee, your service fee, being a part of the system. Then some people are you know, elderly that just live by themselves, flush a toilet, take a shower a couple times a week, and you know they don't really use much. So there's a minimum usage charge. So they're at the bottom, that's that, that bottom section here where elderly one person at the home or not you know it doesn't matter your age right. but just not much usage you're kind of down here so you have a you have a minimum buy-in of like it was 80 bucks it might be 100 bucks now so that's your each, each six months so that's your that's your buy-in if you don't use any more than that then you you, you don't reach that limit of a thousand you know you, you don't pay any more that's okay. just your minimum so you would not have to pay that if you used more uh, you know, it, 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 it kind of rolls into it, right? So, uh, yeah, right. It's Yeah, that's not part of your bill. You're part of your bill. You're already paying that minimum okay. usage thing, right? It goes just for your usage at that point. Yeah, it's for only the people who don't use much at all. So right now, a user knows they have a guaranteed $300 they'll have to pay if, again, we go with alternative three. And then you have I'll, to add. On which page, though? I just well, want to make I, sure we're talking. Oh, actually, well, I'm on the second page. Second page. Yep, right. that's right. If we don't do any capital. Correct. Right. And yep. then the uh, the twenty three dollars is based on per thousand. Correct. So then you add that to it. So right. So, truthfully, your bill could be five hundred or six hundred dollars yep. for the year. Sure. Sure. Uh, easily. 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 Yeah. So, so currently, a minimum a person would pay, um, it looks like $360, right? So under this scenario, it would go from 360 to $500. So it would be an increase of like $140. Yeah. yeah. Is that correct? For a That's correct. Right. Okay. And, and what we try to balance too is like, you know, the cost between being on a sewer system and having a septic at your house, right? So we have this you know, we're trying to figure out, well, we look at sewer usage fees, right? We're always like, we, you know, you have to keep them low enough, but still manage your debt and manage the plant. Same with a house, like you put in a $40,000, $30,000 septic system, the cost over 20, 30 years from that, you know, how much is that monthly? So you're kind of looking at both of those figures. 
So you're trying right. to decide the cost of one versus the other. and They're um, both expensive, no matter how you look. <laughs> yes. I, I don't think either of them is yeah. cheaper. And then yeah. the only Can't other thing. Can't dig a hole anymore. The yeah. only other thing, now I just want to make sure I'm not um, misunderstanding. Sure. Yeah. Um, with the, pot well, not potential, we have to fix the two to two and a half million dollar pipe. That's mm -hmm. a, a given. Yeah. And then the future of the old Deerfield plant is obviously something that yeah, has to be looked at. Mm -hmm. And, and that all comes within our tax bill. No. Correct? No. All right. Explain that no. to me. So, um, any project from, this upgrade is the only one that's in your tax bill. If you're not, if oh, you're the not current using, one, yeah, the 2009. No, no, I knew that, and but that the, also but that includes that pipe, the, that pipe project, right? Old Deerfield plant, Eastern and Cross, anything we do anywhere else in the system does not come from your tax bill. It's only a sewer user bill, unless the town decides. It, we're going to tackle one of these projects and we ask the town will you will the taxpayers also pay in a little bit to help the users on the system because you know we have municipal buildings police department you know all that is right. on it here if the town says yes we'll pony up 10 percent or whatever then you would and, and then it passed as a debt exclusion at a ballot box then we would then you would see a, 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 a little bit more in your taxes so any of us in town who are users users use the sewer yes we can anticipate yeah more in our tax bill in your sewer usage bill in the sewer usage bill right with these upcoming prob yes. Um, yes. problems that are ahead of us yes. correct yep. Yep. so yes. so <laughs> And I just heard you say Waitley might want to join us, Nay. Uh, or might be a part. I'm. I'm I didn't. Feeling I didn't say that. No. I want to correct what no, I said. No, we didn't. Oh, all right. What, don't know what I said <laughs> was that there is a very limited opportunity that's being studied that the industrial park in Waitley that sits next to the industrial park in Deerfield might be able to tie together to increase the number of users, which would have a reduc a reducing effect. But we don't know that that's going to happen. And anything outside of the, the industrial parks is the only thing we're talking about at this point. So we're not talking right. about putting sewer into Waitley and in doing any of that stuff. And then they would, they would have to decide whether they'd want to pay as the money that it would be required for them to tie in. Like it's not just, oh, we hook them up and, hey, you're, here's your fee. Right, because no, they have there's to. There's a buy-in. You hold the chips on that one. Exactly. Right. Yeah. They yeah, want to buy do. in. They need to and, pay to come but in. But the taxpayers paid for the facility down there. No. Down. I, oh, well, you mean the, the upgrade Deerf that we did? Yes. Yeah, the taxpayers yeah. paid for that. And then it's nice to say somebody could possibly, you know, become a part of that and give us some money, which would help. But it's still... We the taxpayers, and I'm I'm just wondering. I, I mean, I'm no engineer, uh, but if Old Deerfield has issues with their septic, is there any way that they can become part of that our plant down here in South Deerfield without going through the 16 to 17 million dollar new plant? It's, it's more. Well, we looked at at one time we looked at studying whether we could turn that into a pump station and pump that oh. but we would need a second station somewhere we looked at lee road in mill village kind of if we had a somewhere you could put a second plant so pumps from there pumps to there then pumps down to here and we could then run lines up over 91 and pick up my area town other houses out there might want to tie in you know, because it's harder and harder to put in a septic system, but all of that is way more expensive than just doing an upgrade at that plant. However, over a hundred years, it would be more beneficial to do that, but it's a lot of money up front, unless there's a big infusion of state or federal money to make that happen, probably it's not gonna happen. Okay, so, those, but yeah, could, those are my good idea, but Thank yeah, you. so we were talking basically that this, the, there were various options at the high end of a pump station uh, plan, it was it was it was in the thirty million it was a range. Thirty million, yeah. And in the low end, and in the high end of the uh, fixing the other plant, it was twelve to fifteen million. So we're talking about 
double. A huge yeah. amount of money in difference in, in creating a pump station. Yep. Because right now, it just doing simple math here, it looks like almost a $6 increase per thousand if we go with that alternative three, um, looking yep. at the, the pipe and all of that, yep. not adding anything else. So it doesn't look good for the future for users. <laughs> No, with it's expensive. the uh, ex expenses it's coming expensive down the to pipe. run these systems, yep. And yep. You okay. have a choice because a lot of times the DEP says, as they did with that plant, you must fix this. And right. we're kind of left trying to find a way to do it. So we want to be a little proactive and do it on our terms instead of their terms. All right. Um, and of course, when the, uh, when the uh, federal government was paying 90% of the cost of mm -hmm. installing sewer systems, it wasn't that expensive to build the old plants, mm -hmm. but now we're paying 90% of the cost or more yeah. of putting these plants in place and fixing them. So that was a federal policy decision when they started giving tax cut to billionaires and, and then pushing all of the costs onto local communities. That's why our bills are so high. Mm. And, and our businesses, our larger businesses in town, not your, they're, they're pretty much paying what I'm paying. From what you well, it said, depends on correct? how much usage they have. Right. Yeah. I mean, if they have a lot of bathrooms, then they're paying more usage or if they're running a lot of water through the system. But everything else equals out according to the numbers. Yes. Correct? Yeah. We don't have any, like right. our tax rates okay. is the same as, yeah. All right. Yeah. So and we do, we do have for our farmers, we do, we do have um, programs to help the farmers as well. Like um, I, I think uh, Glinsky's and there's other farmers in town that use a lot of water for the farming and doesn't go into the system, obviously crops and all that stuff. We have worked on policies to help that as mm -hmm. well. So oh, I appreciate that. Sure. Thank you. Yep. Feed us all. All right. Well, um, I think we've uh, had a fairly interesting and educational discussion. Thank you, David, for coming. Thanks uh, for having me. Really appreciate it. Uh, Thank you very much. Nice to meet you. Yep. All right. All right. Have a good night. Take care. Thank you. So, um, next up topic is uh, select board reports and announcements. Well, Tim, I, I just want to interrupt you really quick. I, I think we did have someone in the audience looking to uh, contribute to public comment. Oh, great. Um, oh, did we? Okay, yeah. Oh, so you mean the public comment period? Yeah, period? yeah. Sure. Okay. So, yes. yeah, if there's somebody who has a general comment uh, that Not they want to make. The sewer? Is this for board of health, too? Or just sure. Board? Yep. Oh. Right. So she was going to address this at Board of Health, but I. Oh, okay. I, wasn't, I want you I to wait till the Board of Health. Okay. Oh, that's fine. Gotcha. <laughs> yep. I didn't hear that part. Sorry. So no, that's good. Um, I just happened to know Megan was here from the <laughs> health. Health. Yeah. Um, so do you want to talk about this uh, Mass Clean Water Trust, uh, Christopher? Do you want me to? Or yeah, to Trevor. Yeah, go for it. Just, uh, just that we um, had. I signed tonight the. Uh, DocuSign paperwork. This is the asset management um, grant that we got for studying the sewer collection system and the stormwater collection system. We got two separate grants, so very grateful to DEP and um, all for uh, for that work. Um, so we, I think we, I signed everything tonight because I didn't realize, I thought it was Sarah that was signing, but maybe we both had to sign because she said she wasn't going to process it until I signed it. So I did that tonight and I think everybody got emailed copy of that. So I think we're good to go. I don't know if we have anything else to go on that, right? No, I, th I think you're all set. Yeah. yeah, okay, great. So that is- That's done. That's the sewer pipe? That's the sewer and collection pipe. and the drainage collection. Okay. Yep, both of those are done. Okay. Or at least started. <coughs> Any other announcements? A little discombobulated, I don't think I so. know. I know, I just feel, yeah. Blake? Um, Yeah, I just have one comment. Um, it was brought up um, a couple of weeks ago that um, at, a, at one of the public meetings that I was not in favor of uh, senior housing. Mm. I just want to make sure that I clarify that, that I am absolutely in favor of senior housing. My right. question was with the St. James property, and I wanted to make sure that uh, it was something that was feasible at that particular time. Sure. So I just want to make sure that... Uh, it's out there publicly <laughs> that they know that I am absolutely in favor Great. of senior housing. Thanks for Great. the clarity. I did have one comment. I attended Friday the um, 
Mass Municipal Association legislative breakfast um, it took place this time. They do it in um, six places around the state in October and um, for our region was was up in Leiden on Friday morning. So I attended that. Uh, Joe Comerford was there for a bit of time and then she was hosting um, Secretary Howe, who's uh, um, our economic <laughs> economic development um, secretary. So uh, she had spent, I think, all like eight hours in Western Mass. So that was awesome. She came out to look at all the different things we're doing for economic development out here. Um, and Natalie Blay was there to speak a bit, but they gave a good legislative uh, breakdown. Obviously they're not in session right now that the session is over, but they are trying to compile some bills before January 1st. Um, they're working on a, a couple of, you know, supplemental bills and, um, you know, and then obviously, gonna, you know, elections will happen and then they'll gear up for a new session, which is always a two year session. But, um, they, you know, it was nice to see the work that, that they've done, um, the Western Mass delegation to try and pull in other rural areas and convince the eastern part of the state, you know, why it's important to fund out here. And we've done uh, they've just done some great work as far as rural roads. Uh, increasing chapter 90 spending um the fair share amendment um that money that kind of came in where where they were putting that has to be to education has to be to roads so there's a lot of different um rural um initiatives that they've been working on and funding uh so it was a good it was a really good session so look forward to that and i know the um, mma conference is uh scheduled in a new place because they're remodeling the uh Heinz center um so that's going to be in January again, so I'm looking mm -hmm. to sign up for that. So that's all I got. And uh, I attended two things last week with um, one was involving the Canadian Consul General, um, Massachusetts's biggest trading partner outside of the United States is Canada. Mm -hmm. um, Western Mass itself, um, I think, has almost two billion in trade, but um, it's an amazing figure. That was uh, something that was put on by the council and and the um who's jeevan work for yes yeah, the mass office of uh, international travel and tourism yeah nice. and uh, so massachusetts and canada worked together and it was a little um two-hour uh, presentation at treehouse and the next day um christopher and i and i don't uh, know if anyone else from uh greg, greg and, and uh, um jesse dean from the chamber Oh, wait, you were there. out here for, um, they were out touring Western Mass. So we met at Yankee Candle and had conversations about, uh, you know, um, how we can benefit from working with the state and mm. uh, increasing tourism to the area. So Great. always trying to encourage, you know, business development out here. So, so now on to Board of Health. I don't know if Val is here. Yeah, I think. Well, yeah, she, there she is. Yep. I, Hey Val. She was. I know Val is she the BRPC? Ah, uh, yeah, that's yeah. That's she her. should be. Yep. Hold on, I have to unmute myself. <laughs> All right, welcome, thanks. Val. Hi there. How are you? Good. Hey, just real quick before you get into it, um, I think Friday is our uh, court case for right. receivership. Right. I I was going to attend if you. I didn't know if you were going to be there. Yep, okay. I, w I will be there. Okay, um, great. Yeah, it's, we have a court case for the receivership case on 9197 Stillwater. And basically, um, the receiver is going to present his plan. He has to move move forward. Yep. Um, and it's requesting that he be allowed to do more. And he has cleaned up quite a bit. Um, I think he's gone through like 55 dumpsters. Can you imagine? I sent you that report a couple weeks ago. Yes. Um, the, the next step for him is we have a perk test scheduled for 91 and a Title V for 97 because 97 does have a septic system. Okay. Well, somewhere. <laughs> yeah, somewhere. So well, actually, there. we we know where that one is. We just has to we just have to see if it passes or not. Okay. That's great. This is just for those. Uh, it was the old Romanowski property that we're yep. uh, we have in in receivership through the attorney general's office. Um, Obear is the um, receiver, and they're they've been cleaning up a lot of the property um, to try and get it, you know, remodeled and back on the tax rolls. 
Yeah. Have any of you um, gone by that and done a drive-by? I have, yes. Or no? Looks yeah, like, I've been over. Pretty good. Yep. Okay, yeah. He has cleared out quite a bit. Yeah. So, so that's what we're doing with that. Yep. Um, Thank you. Are we here? Can we talk about the BBA? Sure. I think. Are they here? Uh, oh. No, they're, they're not in attendance. Um, okay. So I'm handing out, uh, this is a little last minute, didn't get to add to your packets, oh, but we have okay. a, a draft uh, order of suspension um, okay. of their permit. Um, so, you know, I, I think, Val, correct me if you're, I'm wrong, but I, I think your first thought was to make any kind of uh, permit for that establishment contingent on them, um, you know, reapplying for a food permit and getting an inspection from the building inspector, the fire chief and Val. And then also potentially hiring, you know, a third part party to help run the business. Um, after discussions with town council, it, it became clear it made sense to basically include that as part of a revocation hearing at a later date. Okay. Um, so what this draft order of suspension says is, you know, we based on the evidence that we heard at the hearing in on October seventh, you know, your permit remains suspended, um, lists out the violations, and then. Um, gives notice that we are going to be scheduling a hearing of revocation in November, and that's that November thirteenth date is our next board hearing. Um, so I did want to, you know, leave a space there to basically plug in a time, uh, depending on what the board wants to do in terms of scheduling. Um, but that'll give, you know, uh, us an opportunity to talk about again the specifics of Val's proposal, and then also give the business owner time to potentially clean up the business as well. <clears throat> and are we, um, do we need to read this in or do we basically, can we approve this as presented? Yeah, you could approve it as presented. Um, are we at a, a point where we could pick a time to, um, to hold this um, revocation, order of revocation? Uh, hearing yeah so my only comment on that would be obviously our standing meeting is at six um i think we were talking about potentially meeting with the police union um mm -hmm. prior to that okay. um so that's the only other kind of scheduling question mm -hmm. um so and is there any any um like do we have to give them I mean, if we gave them notice tonight that would cover any like 14 day period or oh yeah yep yeah, we're, okay. yeah we're more than a month out at this point so we would be or not okay. more than a month but close to a month does anybody have an opinion about uh, when we would want to put this onto the agenda oh what time on yeah. the agenda um 6 30 or do you need something no that's fine yeah yeah 6 30 yeah. okay so uh let's see I'd, it's just almost done uh And you're still at the November 13th? Yep. So um, I'd make a motion to approve this order of suspension as presented with the addition of um, including the 6.30 start time for this um, public hearing. You made that motion? I'll second the motion. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Trevor McDaniel, aye. Blake Gilmore, aye. Tim Hilchey, aye. Okay. Valerie, you'll be able to attend? I, I will. I can at attend in person. Thank you. Okay. Um, Do you need signatures on this? No, it's all right. I'll, I'll draft it up and I okay. can have Great. Tim sign. Perfect. So, Thank you. Um, unless we want to authorize Christopher to sign. Or you could do that. Yeah, sure. Well, you've got... Yeah, it was it, just, it, and that's just in a draft right. form. So if you gotcha. want to update that's fine. it, that's so I like to make yep. a second motion to authorize Christopher to sign uh, on second. behalf of the select board. All those in favor? Trevor McDaniel, aye. Like Gilmore, aye. Tim Hilchey, aye. It just means that we can get it out there yeah. quicker. Quicker. Um, yep. Valerie, did you have more? Um, I did. I had a complaint over over the weekend, actually Sunday into Monday, mm -hmm. about another one of, of the restaurants having insects. In there, I, I went and I did an inspection today. I spoke to the owner. I inspected the kitchen. The kitchen was actually pretty good. And I I, um, I let her know, the owner, I let her know that we had a complaint about um, a bug in their food. And I showed her the, the picture and she said, oh yeah, 
I, I, I'm aware that we have uh, Terminex coming uh, twice twice a month. I have the receipts, and she showed me the receipts, and I was satisfied with that. And she apologized profusely that that had happened, and it wouldn't happen again. But most of the restaurants do have some sort of insect infestation just because of the nature of, of the business. Mm -hmm. They have warm, moist food, and that's an attraction to, uh, to, to insects. And the summer's worse, obviously, than the winter. Right. So we also have a, a person who is in attendance that has a question that related to health issues. So do you want okay. to come up, and, and come up while yeah. Valerie's still here? Yeah, this isn't um, related to the restaurant. Okay. But, okay. Um, Just name and yeah. <laughs> thank you. Um, I'm Megan Tudrin, and I, am, I live in South Deerfield, but I'm here more on the on the Valley Health Regional Collaborative. Um, and I just wanted to make sure that you guys are aware of the, the workforce standards. So we have um, any new inspector that you hire is going to have to have a registered sanitarium within six years. Um, you have to have a pool inspector. You have to become Title V certified. There's, yep. a, there's a timeline that you have to get these things. Sure. Well, one of the big ones is a registered sanitarian because you have to have a science degree to get this now in Massachusetts. Um, you, could, you could pass the test easily. Well, I shouldn't say easily. But you, could, <laughs> you could pass the test, but they're not going to let you get it unless you have like 30 science credits. Um, there's also fit food and fit housing that it's, it's brand new. Um, most of the people who are in the health departments now have finished tier, tier one, tier two, um, is a in-person class as well as online class. And tier three is you go to the FERCOG and you do, um, training with them. Mm -hmm. Um, Bree Dupree is our our representative and she goes out and takes people to restaurants and watches them and make sure that everything is up to standard. So um, I know that we have an open inspector spot or we did. Um, we do. And I try, I've been trying. Are to you offering? No, <laughs> <laughs> no, thank you. Um, but I have been trying to recruit, recruit. Exactly. Thank you. And I did find yeah. someone who has um, a doctorate degree in chemistry. She's been a professor. She's, um, amazing. She, she is just somebody that um, I think would fit this position really well, but she put in her application almost two months ago and hasn't heard anything. And I did bring it up at our last VHRC meeting and Tim was going to reach out, but she still hasn't heard anything. Huh. Um, did so she have a uh, title five? And she does not, but she, she has all of the things stuff? that we could train her very quickly. Uh -huh. So she could get up to par I mean, soon, like serve safe. You can, all you need to do the restaurants technically on the books right now is serve safe and you can get that in two days. Mm -hmm. um, so, um, but can I just say something? So yeah. we, we, we do have somebody that has applied and he is, right. he is um, FDA standardized certified uh, title five inspector. Um, he's a soil evaluator. He's done barn inspections. He's had quite, he has quite a lengthy uh, resume. I don't know if, if you've seen it, no, but that's great. Yeah. I don't know. Chris, do you have a copy that you can um, let her see? Yeah. The only thing he doesn't to. have is he has his bachelor's degree in something other than science. So, mm -hmm. and he has um, expressed a desire to, um, to get the RS, mm -hmm. but he has pretty much everything else. He's actually a public health trainer as well. Great. That's good news. Yep. Um, and, I, and I did follow up with her about yeah, uh, the but I do the think candidate. that everyone should who puts in an application should at least get a phone call absolutely and if not an interview especially if they have a doctorate degree you know it's that's just I feel like I know doctorate's pretty <laughs> I mean a lot I, of education I feel like yeah yeah I don't know amount of that breakdown between transition to staff or something I'm not sure why yeah, generally not quite sure, we would. yeah well it looks like it looks like we received that application August 28th I think Casey announced her retirement the following week and probably right. the, you know, it, it just fell through the cracks. So yeah. apologies about that. We'll certainly reach out yeah. and give her an update. Yeah. Sounds um, good. Thanks for bringing it to attention. And another thing that we're trying to work on with the VHRC is um, um, equity and diversity and things like that. So we really want to, to give everyone a chance. Um, I mean, I hate to say this, but we don't want to just always hire the, the white male that's gotten the, the job every time just because they have it. But with all those certifications, that definitely puts a, a different spin on everything. You know, I yeah. need to hire somebody that yeah. has 
the especially the soil value writer because that yeah. one's a hard one to well, the, the waiting list is like mm -hmm. six I have, seven I have a months. Question. was any of this brought before us to it hasn't been yet okay, no no so yeah we I think this is yet. something that Perfect. we need to have brought yeah. before us so that we can discuss it and look at the pros and the cons on this type yeah. of thing. Yeah, we have it. Perfect. Yeah. So, and the other thing is, um, I wanted to talk a little bit about our flu clinic. We did yes. um, we did one at the fire station and one at Deerfield Elementary School. The one at Deerfield Elementary School was not run by us, but it was organized by us. Um, they had 74 people registered. I haven't gotten the total of how many shots they actually gave. Mm -hmm. I'm sure it was more than that because they allowed yeah. walk-ins at that one. Um, and they were giving flu and COVID shots. So it was 74 people, but... I'm assuming most people got at least two yeah. um, that showed up too, that showed up. Um, the one at the um, South Deerfield Fire Station, we had asked the senior centers to help people register, but we only got nine people pre-registered, really? which was, that was not what we were expecting. Huh. Um, I'm not sure where the, where the- Breakdown Breakdown was, was exactly, but, um, the, yeah. the good news is, is that um, Adam Sokolowski talked with us that morning and said, hey, are you guys taking walk-ins? We said, we sure are. We yeah, my four parents nurses came from just Conway, sitting here. I think, yes. to get it done. And so. so he put out that blast page and we ended up seeing 65 people and there was right. no wait for anybody. It went super smooth. Nice. Um, so I'm hoping that we can do that again by next <laughs> year, sure. maybe really push it so that we can get more people pre-registered. Yeah. Is, my, there, is there a way we can do this at the senior center so that the seniors... Don't have to go anywhere. We to did get it, ask, or? but they, we were told no that we couldn't do it at the senior center because yeah, I don't it wasn't think we big had enough. Space. We just didn't have the space for yeah. it. Yeah, but the that's when the fire department stepped up, and I think they had a nice yeah. spot for it. Yeah, um, yeah. I know my my dad. I think saw it in the paper, and then. Um, said, you know, do I have to register? Can I just do a walk-in? I said, well, I think they want you to register, but I'm sure you could do a walk-in Yeah, walk -in registration too, takes about Because otherwise you've got to do it when you're there, on, right? You still, have to, yeah. you still have to do it when you're there, either before or after. So I said, just do it before you yeah. go. But um, yeah. So I think they did. Well, we can certainly... And they um, thought it was a great, great clinic. Worked out yeah, right. I mean, Good. we've had great success with these clinics in the past. So it's obviously uh, we need to do a better job of getting the public uh, information out. So especially, um, especially to the seniors, we, the seniors need it urgently. So. We used to be so much more involved, right? And and the whole model changed since mm -hmm. COVID. We, we had hundreds of people and all kinds of volunteers. And Carolyn led a lot of that. And, um, you know, it the whole flavor of all of that has changed immensely we've lost a lot of volunteers we don't have the people lined up that we used to um it it's 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 kind of sad we just you know the whole system has really changed immensely since those days and you know we have a flu clinic you know that are not a flu clinic but a you know a, a plan and we've done you know we did so EDS much work plan. and yeah. never was utilized through covid and it just everybody's mm -hmm. That well, we, we did pull that. up um, several we tree, did. treehouse clinics that were essentially, um, you know, yeah. EDS driven. But, um, right. you know, after that, that, after that, it basically like we had the drive through drive through clinic that we used to run through the DPW. Mm -hmm. And um, you and I have talked about that, mm -hmm. that you prefer not to do that. It was a huge and, success. Um, yeah. So hundreds of people. Um, we'll work the kinks yeah. out for next year. Um, Perfect. And if you have, are you, are you still willing to do more this year, or is oh, yeah. we done? Yeah, yeah, no, we have. Okay. We we just did a clinic the other day in Sunderland, but I have shots. So if you can get a if you can get a group of people registered, I can hold another clinic. It's it's not it's yep. not hard for me to do that to just right. You know, but it's just about getting getting people registered because mm -hmm. time well, is limited. So right. I won't I won't come and do a clinic for you know ten. Five no, but, yeah, you need. Right, it. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Although so, we will do um, in home seniors and yes, things thank like you. that. So if a senior needs one or or somebody's having a hard time getting that, out, um, yeah. I will go to their house and I will give it to. Is them. Is that part of the registration? Can you? Is there some way of do, identifying that? Um, identifying that the senior is at home. Well, we, and they, we do yeah. have Cindy a list of shut us about, um, yeah. I know we know, we knew of one senior, um, the other day that needed it. So, yeah. um, and master Tataro went out and gave it to her. Wonderful. Thank um, you. But if, if you know of anybody else, or if anybody knows of anybody, send them our way, call okay. the Greenfield health department or call yeah. and master Tataro or Cindy, and okay. they can reach us and we can get it to them or, Great. you know, and is there a, is there a period of time after which you traditionally don't do flu clinics? I mean, how far into 
Usually November, most December, people have November. gotten November. them yeah. by November. Yeah, mid-November. Yeah. It would be really hard to find people that still need it after mid-November. Yeah. Uh, this is really the prime time to get it now because the flu is not here yet. Or right. I shouldn't say not here, but any, we had one person and that was it. Any mm. idea how the match is yet? It's not great. <laughs> yeah. Figures. Yeah. It's always a hit or miss. You yeah. just never know. Sometimes yeah. it's like right on and other times you're just mm -hmm. not sure. Yeah, I know. It is hard. And the yeah. last thing I wanted to bring up is, is it possible to have somebody as an alternate voting member for the VHRC? Um, but mm -hmm. our last two meetings, we haven't had a quorum and it's not just Deerfield. It's, um, sure. I think a lot of the smaller towns are struggling. Of course we can. And, you know, um, Shootsbury has been great and they have two people. So if one can't come, the other one can come. We're going to have a meeting. I'm hoping November 7th um, will be our next one. I sent an email out. Did Jack get a... To Jack get a quorum for Jack tomorrow? doesn't need a quorum for his meetings. Okay. That's <laughs> that's something totally different. He's right. not in the VHRC. Right. Um, so that's just more of an information meeting yeah. for COVID. Epidemiology. Yeah, yeah, things like that. It's a totally different grant. Are um, they a Zoom meeting or is it a just... Zoom, Oh, yeah. and still no quorum. Okay, yeah. So definitely yeah. we could certainly do that. Yeah. That's I that's started fantastic. going to those, but then Tim told me he was doing it, so I... Well, actually, the both of us went to the first right. one that, yeah. that I went to, and then, you know, thereafter I've been going is... Right. You know, so it's a, uh, no, I'm not sure. Okay. But, I mean, I'd be willing to work with you, Jim, if there's times you, know, you can't be there, I can yeah. definitely the, go. What we were supposed to have one last Thursday, but we yeah. didn't have that one because we didn't have a quorum. Okay. Um, and I think I found out um, through email I, that uh, you weren't having, you wouldn't have a quorum. Yeah. Oh, I think maybe you're thinking of Jack's meeting because ours, Possibly. Um, ours, we were just on there waiting. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> okay. Oh, God. Well, yeah. <laughs> and certainly, <laughs> I'll jump on. But you, but you have to be a voting member, so that's a thing. So if I you see. could elect a secondary person, sure. so that I could call whoever and be like, "Hey, help us out. We're, we don't have enough do, or something." That do you would need be a motion now? I don't know what you need for. And that's all. <laughs> Thank you. Which Hold on, I, I have a question. Yeah. yeah. Yep. And sorry. Um, so with the, with the flu vaccine clinics and the COVID vaccine clinics, what are you doing with the vaccine reimbursement? That vaccine reimbursement goes back to the VHRC account. So that okay. all of the vaccines were purchased with VHRC money. So any okay. money that we get back from those vaccines will yeah. go back to the VHRC right. so that we can buy vaccines for next year. Perfect. Okay. That's all good. right. That's and all I wanted the good to know. news Thanks. is we finally got Medicare reimbursement. Nice. So that was the biggest thing that we hadn't had. And that was the benefit of you guys having the FERCOG yep. was that they could get Medicare reimbursement and right. we could not. Right. But we just got approved. Oh, Everything's fantastic. all set. And so that we will, you know, That's now we are billing help. for. That's yeah. a huge help. Yeah. Okay, because great. senior doses are about $120. Yeah. 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 Megan, well, thank I just, you for your work. I just want to check that you you do have my cell number, right? I do not. You don't. Oh, well, well, then I need to give it to you tonight. So yes, yeah, or I'll send it to you in an email. Okay, sounds good. Yeah, great. Because I would love you know if I forget a meeting, you, you there's all right. so many just message us. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Do you, do you want a um, a motion for an alternate? Sure. Let's not. I'll make a motion for Blake uh, Gilmore to be alternate to the. VHRC. VHRC, thank VHRC. you. Right. <laughs> Steering, Steering committee. Me, yep. Second. Thank you. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Trevor McDaniel, aye. Blake Gilmore, aye. Make sure, make sure Megan has your, your cell number, Blake, in case. She's got my cell Okay, number. good. In case you need to jump on. All right, good. And I think we've got one more Board of Health uh, sure. matter. So, okay. um, and, you know, on the aforementioned health agent position, um, oh. So we have uh, a candidate who we're Wonderful. looking to make an offer to, um, you know, myself, Val, Dick, and Greg uh, interviewed uh, this individual a couple weeks ago. Um, he's, as you know, Valerie out outlined earlier, he's very well qualified for the position. Um, you know, I think he let us know at that interview we'd probably need about three weeks to transition into the role. Yes. Um, so Val's going to be, and Val and Dick are both, of course, going to be sticking around for Thank a little you. bit. Um, we appreciate it. Um, Is it still July, Val? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not July. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I yeah. really appreciate you hanging with us um, and doing all that you've done. It's been wonderful. So do you want a motion to uh, proceed with this? That would be great. Yeah, yeah. to make a motion to proceed with the, um, to approve the town administrator to negotiate, assist, uh, inter town administrator to negotiate the position for um, health agent for Ned. Savinsky. 
Second. Uh, any discussion? Nope. Uh, so this is, again, this is, this is something that's already done deal that we're Let's offering do. him the position already. Correct? Yes. Uh, yeah, so we, we did, we did staff interviews yep. and, um, you know, I think you got a little bit of a sense that the challenge actually finding a health agent with the, the right qualifications. So Very hard. at Val's recommendation, I was looking to move forward with uh, submitting an offer letter to this gentleman. Okay. I'm good with that. All right. Um, if there's no further discussion, all those in favor? Trevor McDaniel, aye. Blake Gilmore, aye. Tim Hilchey, aye. Thank you. That's All right, that's good. Great news. Thank you. Well, good luck in your negotiating. <laughs> don't you. come back if you can't. <laughs> I don't want to know. If he doesn't accept, I don't want to know. <laughs> All right, thanks. Uh, anything else, Val, before we let you go? No, I think I think that's it. Things are like moving along. Um, I do have, um, on Friday, of course, we have... We have housing court. I'm going to also touch base with Deerfield Academy about their new dining hall. Um, I'm waiting to get the plans. Bob was not in today because it's his uh, once a month uh, mm -hmm. workshop that he does for credit. So yep. um, I, I need to take take a look at those. And it would be good if we get Ned on board so he, he can start to transition over on these roles. Yeah, that'd be great. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Valerie. Have a good night. You. Good night. Bye. Bye-bye. <clears throat> All right. Can we um, plow through these minutes? Yes. Can I make a motion? Please. So I'm going to make a motion to approve the uh, select board minutes for July 25th, 2024. Second. All those in favor? Trevor McDaniel, aye. Lake Gilmore, aye. Tim Hilchey, aye. Make a motion to approve the select board minutes for August 7th, 2024. Second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Trevor McDaniel, aye. Blake Gilmore, aye. Tim Hill, G, aye. Make a motion to approve the minutes for August 8th, 2024. Second. Blake and I will trade off on the seconds. <laughs> Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Trevor McDaniel, aye. Blake Gilmore, aye. Tim Hill, G, aye. Make a motion to approve the minutes for select board for August 21st, 2024. Second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Trevor McDaniel, aye. Blake Gilmore, aye. Tim Hilchey, aye. Make a motion to approve the select board minutes for August 23rd, 2024. Second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Trevor McDaniel, aye. Blake Gilmore, aye. Tim Hilchey, aye. Make a motion to approve the minutes for select board for um, September 4th, 2024. Second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Trevor McDaniel, aye. Blake Gilmore, aye. Tim Hilchey, aye. I make a motion to approve the Board of Health minutes for um, October 7th, 2024. Second. Any further discussion? Nope. Hearing none, all those in favor? Trevor McDaniel, aye. Blake Gilmore, aye. Tim right. Hilchey, aye. Thank you. Thank you so much for your work on the minutes. That's a, that's a big pile, and uh, yeah, we're very um, happy to have them done and get them uploaded to the web. Also, Safe. want to thank uh, Greg Snedeker for the Board of Health minutes because that was an interesting and challenging meeting in many ways. So, thank you. Thank you. All right. Um, want a motion for the? Yes. Okay. Next up is some motions for one-day wine and liquor licenses. So, take it away, Trevor. So, I'll make a motion to approve the one-day um, uh, liquor license for uh, trustees of the Deerfield Academy. This would be for the um, date of event of October 29th, 2024. Second. Yeah, all the uh, insurances and stuff are in order. So yep, um, looks like if there's no discussion, um, all those in favor? Trevor McDaniel, aye. Blake Gilmore, aye. Tim Hill, G, aye. And then I'd like to make a motion to approve the one-day uh, liquor license for... Um, United Way, I believe it is. Uh, yeah, for United Way, the Franklin, Hampshire, uh, for event on November 6, 2024. Second. Um, okay. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Trevor McDaniel, aye. Blake Gilmore, aye. Tim Hilchey, aye. And, and that that that'll be at Greenfield Savings yeah, Bank. Yeah, at Greenfield Savings Bank, there's a social event held um, 
catered by uh, Cheswick's Market uh, Cider Wine Mead, served sold by Four Phantoms Brewing. So, great. Okay. Um, can you take us through the DCR acquisition? Yeah, happy to. And I'm just sharing my screen. I'll blow this up a little bit. But uh, if you recall, a few weeks ago, um, DCR approached us about uh, submitting a letter of support for a grant application uh, for funds to acquire a few different properties on the Pecumtuck Ridge uh, that they're looking to preserve. Um, and I'm happy to pull up that map again if, if folks want to take a look. Um, they've got just sort of a housekeeping item for us tonight. They, uh, according to some mass regulations, they need the select board to announce that DCR is um, planning to acquire an interest in certain property for, um, for recreation purposes. Um, I've pulled up uh, here. Actually, Greg, do you mind just... Yeah, I've, I've just pulled up the sort of announcement language that they need read out at the meeting, and then um, you know we can have that included in the minutes and transmit it to DCR, and that'll fulfill their obligation under those mass regs. All right, so um, just the stuff that's in the box, right? Yeah, just uh, after at the, this, the part that starts with the Department of Conservation. So that's all Blake needs to read? Or I can read it, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. All right, I'll do it while he's signing. The Department of Conservation and Recreation may acquire an interest in a parcel of land located in Deerfield as shown in the attached locus map marked as Exhibit A for conservation and or recreation purposes. And just as a reminder, here's the, the actual map of the properties. I know it's probably a little bit difficult for folks to see, um, but there uh, you have, to have the Connecticut River over here on the right. Um, and then uh, a couple properties right up there on Pecumtuck Ridge that uh, DCR is acquiring for recreation purposes. And this is what you need to sign and date. Okay. All right. Um, the next item uh, that we're going to discusses to review a request to authorize $15,000 of repairs to Depot Road. Um, I'm not sure that this is the correct source. Well, well it's going to be either one. It's going to be either from unutilized 2023 storm damage funds or American Rescue Plan Act funds. Um, so briefly, uh, there's a, a Deerfield Water District water main that's underneath Depot Road. Um, the 2023 storm, as most people know who use Depot Road, Road for any reason, uh, it, the road's been closed since then, and a good portion of the paved portion of the road is washed out. Um, and so um, Stanley Yaswinski, who's the director of the Deerfield Water District is concerned that the, the infrastructure is going to get washed away. So the proposal is to um, have <clears throat> $15,000 worth, uh, worth of work done involving trucking in riprap uh, and re reinforcing the bank where the erosion is taking place. Um, while that's going on, they would also rep uh, replace two storm drains that transit that road that are collapsed um, so that hopefully and then to dig out um, dig out the uh, <clears throat> edge of the road so that water can flow into the culverts again um, and my understanding is that the police chief and the DPW worked out this proposal you have any further things to add to that Christopher no I, th I think you covered it any questions from did you already talk to chief about this Blake no okay I'm, I'm good with it. I, I have talked to Chief about it. Um, I understand, you know, we came in well under budget on the other projects, and this would be, and, and really, it's ma mainly the reason I'm okay with it is that securing the water infrastructure. If it wasn't for that, I might just let that road disappear, but <laughs> it's important to support the pipe. So, one of the reasons why um, the police chief and also the EMS and the fire departments are concerned about getting this repaired as well is that 
in some occasions it, it may be the only access path to get emergency vehicles up towards Eagle Brook if other access points are not uh, not open so yep. um, that's it's another there. reason why it makes sense to take this uh, opportunity to do this work so go just ahead. a question on that is this going to be a temporary fix or is this do you think this is going to actually handle this situation because that's the what I'm thinking of is, is that's that big gully that's in there now correct it is a big and gully is and there, the road alongside I know we met with the state and I went up with the chief you did and we did talk about this the state getting involved is there still any chance that we can get them to come in and fill that that gully in enough so that it um because the the pipe actually sits like 15 feet above where the the bottom of that ravine is and i think it's still going to keep wearing out as oh, going. I'm we going we might about that. we might be thinking about two different pipes the pipe that we're concerned about is not the one that's draining okay it's there is there's an actual water pipe yeah, yeah. oh i know what you're yeah. talking about yeah, yeah. And, and, and yes that was the road we walked down where the yeah. water pipe was yeah. but on the other side of the road right. is where that drainage pipe is and i'm just wondering if it's going to keep eroding that away and we're going to end up keep having to keep deal with that right and yeah if, that's is a there good some question. venue we could go after to maybe try to fill that hole in so i i understand that part of this is um to use um erosion cloth in between layers of stone so that the 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 riprap uh, repair um and i i believe that they plan to vegetate it so yeah. i i think it's viewed as at least this side of it the the culvert that we're speaking about is on the other, the other side, side of the ravine yeah. um and you know i don't have an answer for that my understanding when when we were looking at it was that the idea was to put a fill in riprap under where the drainage is coming out large enough so that it doesn't get washed away and i am in agreement with all of that i was just yeah. wondering about the future is there something yeah. we should be looking at to, we should probably yeah. keep keep on it see mm -hmm. if we can find a way to mitigate it well <clears throat> do you feel able to vote this tonight or yeah okay I'm so good. i'll take a motion to motion to approve um the funding of up to fifteen thousand dollars to um do repairs to secure the water infrastructure on depot road second all Thank right you. it's been moved and seconded any further discussion hearing none all those in favor trevor mcdaniel aye blake gilmore aye tim Hilchey, aye and i would favor using the arpa funds because if we don't we're going to lose them i so, agree with that yeah i don't think there's any remaining unutilized storm but brenda's right. been divvying, divvying out the money so i don't know where which pocket yeah, she's Brenda been taking it from so mm -hmm. um all right and Next up is the police union thing. Can you speak a little bit about that, Chris? Sure, yeah, we, we brought this up a couple of weeks ago. Uh, Trevor didn't happen to be at the meeting, so we wanted to just kind of finalize it. But, uh, you know, the police union has just approached us about, um, re, you know, renegotiating their collective bargaining agreement. Um, uh, you know, Adam Sokolowski reached out to just say that, you know, traditionally we brought three issues to the table or each side has, and we're looking at kind of an early November date um, you know, I threw out November 13th, given that's our next meeting anyway, maybe we could meet with them a little bit before the meeting, uh, just to kick things off. Um, Trevor and I had an opportunity to talk a little bit about it. It sounded like in the past, you know, uh, a couple items of discussion, obviously just pay in general, um, cameras also, yeah. um, and anything else we want to kind of throw out there could be right. brought forward to, to those discussions. And, and did I, we have some thought about, I mean, this is right in Blake's wheelhouse did we have a thought about having him be the person to and that was my recommendation yeah. and my thoughts i would say so yeah. I, I would make a motion to approve blake gilmore the select board representative along with our town council and town administrator i'll second that um any further discussion trevor hey. mcdaniel i so oh, sorry no that's all right <laughs> you just go right at sorry yeah. uh hearing none all those in favor trevor mcdaniel i blake gilmore i tim Ilchi, I. Thanks, Blake. Yep. And, um, and just, uh, you know, while we're on that really quick, I know uh, we've also got two other collective bargaining agreements that need to be renegotiated this year, uh, school employees, and then also, of course, uh, highway. Um, yep. So on the school employees, I think, uh, Trevor, you had some thoughts that you wanted to bring I, up? I do. I, I really would love to be. I was a part of it last time uh, as a school committee member, um, and we had another person from Deerfield on representing uh the district um I, I was really hoping to do that again this year but i um we just got an email 
that there may be interest in in either Sundown or or Conway or Waitley maybe to be a, a partner. So um, I was just I offer my hat to the ring. Would love to bring the experience to do it again. But if if there's a, a great desire from the other towns, I I want to respect that as well. So so I idea. would make a motion to you know. If appoint, it's available, appoint Trevor to the position, the negotiating position for if there is a, you know, a spot, a spot available to represent the select board. And it's an important discussion. So. It is. I second it. Thank you. And I think that um, basically should be a part of it anyways. I mean, even if they've got somebody in there, you should still be a part it's of a it. Huge, uh, it's yeah, a huge it's, part of our budget. Yep. yep. You know, with the biggest town. So, so um, I be more than happy to see you sit in if you're not the actual voting representative yeah i'd still try to attend um and then we i would make a motion we have the the highway um um contract also um dpw workers contract to um to ratify and i would make a motion for tim hilchey to be our representative on that negotiation with the um our attorneys and town second administrator we get two motions going now, though, right? No, Do we? Did we? We already voted on. Did we, uh, vote, did we mine? vote on the yeah. teachers one? I I thought we did, but maybe. Oh, maybe not. I maybe just let's, yapped. Let's, yeah. So all right. Yeah, you know, you're talking over. Your... So um, all those in favor. Of all Trevor, of those in favor of making Trevor, if there's a place available. Blake Trevor. Gilmore, I. Trevor Tim McDaniel, Hilchey, I. I. What would we do without you keeping this? Blake show? Gilmore, come on. Trevor McDaniel, right. I. Tim Hilchey, I. Thank you. I feel like the keystone. We'll clean it up, up in the minutes. <laughs> Yeah. Thank you. Make us look professional. <laughs> All right. So now over to you for the motion or whoever's going to make the motion for the DPW. I uh, make a motion that we have Tim Hilch who represent the select board as a liaison for negotiations for the highway department. Second that motion. Any further discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor? Jeff McDaniel, aye. Blake Gilmore, aye. Tim Hilch, aye. Thank you. And then the, uh, do you want a motion on the election workers as well? There was the next thing in the packet. Yeah, I, I believe so. Um, a letter from Kate Cassie. Um, in accordance with Mass General Law, Chapter 54, Section 12, Election Workers in Towns, I'm respect respectfully submitting the following list of people who are willing to serve as election workers. The term of office is from September 1st, 2024 through August 31st, 2025. Under the Democrat column, it is Andrea Leibson and Jack C. Um, Will Eden. I don't know if I have that right. Will Eden. So that's all I have at the moment. I think she said others before, but these are two. Um, and most recent. Most recent. Um, second. second. Yeah. Blake can second. Um, any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Trevor McDaniel, aye. Blake Gilmore, aye. And I want to thank them very much for stepping up to serve. Tim Hilchey, aye. Uh, and I also want to say that I'm uh, Cassie takes her responsibilities really seriously and great uh, is doing a great job. And uh, in fact, she hosted uh, the uh, politics, what we used to call civics. I don't know what the current high school title is, but a um, group of seniors here last week. Oh. And we went through a whole process of how to vote, how to uh, register voters coming in to vote. Um, it was a good hour and a half. And uh, so she's she's really doing a great job. That's great. Let me echo that because I've watched her work and she's absolutely takes her job very seriously mm -hmm. and is very diligent in what she does. All right. And so there are other board and committee applications. Is that correct, Christopher? Yeah, we've got an application for keeper of the town clock uh, from Tom Spooner. Can you tell us some something about him or what is? Yeah. Do we have do we have stuff in the uh, meeting packet? We can we can return to that one. Uh, the other one is uh, Gretchen Law, uh, who is um, being recommended for appointment to the Deerfield Wells Trust. Um, I'm just going to pull up an email we got from uh, our moderator Dan. Okay. Um, as he made the recommendation. I think we also had a. So he, he was recommending uh, Margaret Doyle to be appointed to the Wells Trust. Um, just as a m reminder, the trust is a charitable trust that serves several charitable purposes, but its largest beneficiaries are students of many Franklin County towns. Mm -hmm. um, the trustees are made up of one resident from various towns pursuant to the terms of the trust. And for many years, Margaret Doyle has served as Deerfield's trustee 
but she's recently uh, moved, creating a vacancy. Oh, okay, so maybe he's not appointing. Something Gretchen, Mark. Gretchen Law, maybe? Yep, exactly. Yeah, I think she'd be great. Yeah, I agree. Um, so his recommendation is that we appoint Gretchen? Yes. Okay. I'll make a motion. I'll make a motion to approve Gretchen Law on the uh, Deerfield representative for the Wells Trust. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Oop, I'm jumping the gun. Jeremy Daniel, aye. Boy, Kilmore, aye. All right. So I, we got three up. All right. And there was, um, and then Paul Oshesky was also looking for the keeper of the clock, correct? Or is that not right? Yeah, do we have any other applicants for any of these positions? Uh, I had heard about Paul, but I hadn't seen an application. I had only seen Tom's. Oh, let's see. Well, I'm. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm happy to wait on this, and then if we have a formal application for both of them, maybe we could ask them to come in. Yeah. Um, so, that's fine. Sure, you can come yeah. up and speak. Um, that way, you know. I do. We have anything from Tom? No, there was just uh, just general uh, volunteering to yeah. see, okay put their names forward. Because I don't. Um, happy to fill it tonight if. This from Paul Chesky, so right. that he had. He had maintained contact with the keeper of the clock. Yeah, Paul Shusky, North Main Street. Um, Welcome. Thank you. When I applied, Casey was still here, and I heard that they're you know having trouble yeah. getting something. So I walked in the office and said, "Casey, I'll do it." Yep. My bio there. My yes, got that here. Yep. I go back to 1955. I was on the board, trustees. We took care of the, took care of the clock, but we so I pretty much know the church like the back of my hand. So I'd be willing to help out. So. I didn't apply per se yep. at the time. It was but sort you, of like come in and said, hey, right. I'm here. Okay. So, um, not sure whatever you guys did either. So, right. You know. So, um, but anyways. So, do, do, just for my sure. own curiosity, sure. uh, what's needed up there? Is it like setting the time every once in a while or making the adjustments or? Yeah. You know, I mean, it is, it's, it's, it's really basic stuff. Yeah. One thing I'd Important. like to see, one thing I'd like to see is return to the uh, fluorescent lights to, for it lit, to be lit again. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. There's fluorescent, there's fluorescent be... lights all yeah. around Lake and yeah. 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 We've been up there. Yeah. And there's a chair there and whatever, but basically yeah. it's just maintenance. Sure. And so you know, ensuring with the, with the bell and whatever. Yeah. So yeah. Um, it's, okay. If you're claustrophobic, I don't recommend it. <laughs> or heights. <laughs> heights too. <laughs> Getting up there. Yeah. I went up part way, but well, I don't think I've been over. I've there been up top. in there. It's pretty cool. It's uh, yeah. It's yeah. But you got to be able to fit mm -hmm. a little bit. <laughs> so anyways, I, I'd like the 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 ladders to be a little better because yeah know, i no, feel like you you're leaning no, back. going backwards yeah. when they when they built that back back in the day it was, ocean wasn't <laughs> they, around they, yeah. <laughs> so. as long as you could climb straight up that was all that was mattered so anyways yeah and do we do if there's significant need for repair that's something we farm out i mean you'd, you'd have to get yeah. obviously a clock you know someone yeah. skilled in uh, that i mean we were just as, as a board member we just made sure and we always maintained you know, back then it was whoever was the was the keeper. Yeah, and we just you know, as the trustees, we would make sure that you know, is there anything they needed? Right. Um, we would make sure that it was always weatherproofed. Yeah. You know. Yeah. You know the dials, even though it was the town clock. I, sure. We would just obviously make sure that you know yeah. the steeple wasn't leaking or anything on the equipment. So mm -hmm. interesting. I, when the, I know I'm going to give you an impossible question. Okay. But, uh, you don't remember anybody that did used to work on that clock, do you? Are they oh, still alive? Oh, the old timers. Yeah. No. I think they're all either in Brookside or St. Stanislaus or something. <laughs> Holy name. Not available at the moment. Not available. Okay. No. The time ran yeah. out. <laughs> and anyone else knows. I don't know. Yeah, they're, I mean, all, they're all gone. But I'm like I say, the last one was, was Bob, Bob Ouellette, and uh, who I knew was you know active with the church. But yeah. um, like I, would, I say. So. I, would, I would make a motion to appoint Paul Oshesky as the keeper of the clock. Second. Thank you. Any hmm. further discussion? All those in favor? Trevor McDaniel, aye. Blake Gilmore, aye. Tim Hilchey, aye. Thank you for Thank your you. willingness Thank you for to your do interest. that. Thanks. Thank you. Um, who to get in contact with in terms of the key or whatever? Yeah. I used to have the key when I was doing the whole church, the right. Oregon, Oregon thing. Sure. Then I gave it to Peter Thomas with all the, you know, the 350th. Yeah. So that's the last. You know, Kevin, give me a key. Got the Oregon. I do stuff. have one too. If, okay. if we if we need yeah. one, I yeah. can swap it. So okay. we can check with the. And clerk. I'll probably touch base with Bob Willett 
just to see That'd be great. what, because he's been the keeper he's been for, for a while. And when, yeah. we were, when church was still active, he was yep. appointed. So, you know, okay. I'd see him on a, on a regular basis. So. That'd be great. But, That'd be great. Yeah. yeah okay. and let us know what, what's needed. Yeah. Like, whatever. Yeah. But like, it would be nice to return. Um, yeah. cause that was, you know, obviously a responsibility nice. of the church to have the power. And now right. with all the upgrades. Right. To the power. I mean, you know, you saw the power panel back sure. in the day. Sure. Mm-hmm. Um, scary. Yeah. Um, you know, if, you know, in terms of, it would be nice to get it lit. Yeah. You know, no, I agree. Let's so, yeah, see if we can. Option. That'd be great. I want you to take the speakers from St. James and put them over there so we get to listen to music. <laughs> you think, you think, <laughs> think Father would have any issue with that? <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> All right. Thank you. All right. Thank, thank you. you, Paul. All right. Correspondence. Yeah. Uh, I just wanted to note, um, you know, one piece of mail that the, the select board received was from a resident just uh, giving some praise to Chris Miller, our interim DPW superintendent um, from John Stacy Sings. He wrote, uh, I just want to take a moment to commend Chris Miller to you. Although we have been experiencing much less than normal rainfall recently, we had strong night, early morning rain. I went out in the pre-dawn dark to see if I might observe possible rain runoff from our neighbor's yard. Uh, and he alludes to some previous emails he had been sending Casey. And then he said, I walked up my driveway onto North Hillside Road. I observed a pickup truck in the dark. Seal beam light on, scan, uh, on scanning the roadside. My hunch was confirmed. It was Chris Miller on duty well before Don looking out for us. I thanked him then. I'm thanking him now for his conscientiousness. Most sincerely, John W. Stacy, 9 North Hillside Road. That's wonderful. Very nice. Get great. And, uh, and be great to make it. I mean, he might, maybe he got a copy of that. Yeah, we'll, Chris, we'll okay. make sure Chris gets a copy. Thank you. Okay. It's good news. Um, anything good else? Is that it? I think that's the, yes. The other item uh, is from Franklin County Tech. Um, I don't want this one. <laughs> oh, was a good one. So yeah, that, they just said uh, for the hammer to drop. You know, please be advised of the results of the meeting held on Tuesday, October eighth, twenty twenty four, for the purpose of selecting municipal collective bargaining representative for the Franklin County Technical School District. The result of the meeting was the selection of, uh, and I'm actually not certain how to pronounce her name. Her name is Malin Dewitt, and Malin. she was Malin. one of she was one yeah. of my past students, so I'm very proud oh, nice. of her. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> yeah, that was an interesting meeting. There was also a candidate from Leiden, but okay. uh, Maitland's uh, young and energetic, and That's very amazing. happy to have her. Great. She's got a law degree too, I think. So I thought that might have been the letter stating that they're know, that they're getting ready to build the building. That's the one I don't want to read. Yeah. Yeah, and they feed their people at those meetings. You know what? <laughs> yeah, we well, better have amazing. a talk with our superintendent. <laughs> anyway, excellent. Um, all right, so reports from you guys. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to follow up on a couple items from the last meeting. So we had um, a petition uh, from folks on Eastern Ave. Uh, just wanted to mention I worked with uh, the police chief and Chris Miller to just send a response, letting them know, you know, we're not going to be uh, asking to implement speed humps at this time. However, we are talking about relocating um, the speed feedback sign and, and potentially some other signage, which I know Chris Miller is looking into um, to try and you know get folks to speed well, to not speed uh, once that road is actually um, brought up to snuff. And then the other item was just about the uh, the lights at the South Deerfield Wastewater Treatment Plant. Uh, Eric and I collaborated, and we sent a letter to that gentleman as well. Um, I know Eric's taking action, as we discussed last time, just to you know reposition the lights, look yeah. at planting some screening vegetation, et cetera. I went to look at it the other night, too, uh, just because I was driving by, and I thought, oh, you know, see what, see what it looks like. And... Um, it seemed like there was a building maybe on the sludge, sludge, not any of the new ones, but the sludge thing that was kind of like pointing that way. So maybe it could be more of a down light, you know, it might've been an old fixture or something, but it seemed like the brightest one. I'm not sure where that person lives, but facing that way, it was, I think on the sludge building, but hmm. take a look at try and get it better. Uh, and then obviously we already touched on the Stillwater property and then just a couple quick updates on community development projects. Um, so one, uh, the Mill Village Road, North uh, North Main Street, 5 and 10 intersection. Mm-hmm. Uh, MassDOT has scheduled what they're calling a road safety audit meeting. Great. Um, so they are going to be here on October 30th um, to, to discuss that. Um, so they did encourage folks to, you know, take a drive through the intersection, 
you know, get a sense of what the concerns might be and then show up on the 30th just to talk about it. We're um, Where on the thirtieth? The bridge, right here, at, uh, right here at the town hall. Yeah, right here at the town hall. Okay. That's yeah. I just. Uh, I didn't so know they're, if they're going to be on site or whether we're going to be. No, on no, it's going to be. I, it, they, you know, they initially sent out a, an invite that just said road safety audit, and I yeah. thought it's going to be like on the side of the road. Right, there's not much. <laughs> but, uh, um, what time is it? It's going to be from. Uh, and I'm just, sorry, I'm just pulling okay. up my calendar yeah. here. I believe it's going to be from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. But let me just okay. confirm that. Um, yep. Yeah. Yeah, 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. Again, it's pretty safe intersection at the moment, at least for one half of it. But eventually, that I know Chief's working uh, working hard to get that bridge open, but I don't think we have news on that yet. It's still interesting when you go, even without North Main Street traffic coming in there. Yeah, it's still interesting when you and I drive through there quite a lot and. Uh, the things you see, you <laughs> shake your head. <laughs> yeah. Like, Why are you doing that? <laughs> yep. I'm always very careful when I go through there. Yeah, it's, it's definitely a danger. Oh, and I, I do want to make a quick correction, actually, because they rescheduled it. It's now going to be at the fire district. Uh, oh. So 84 Greenfield Road, not okay. in the town hall. All right. Uh, they were, we were going back and forth trying to figure out if this sure. would work. But yeah, sure. it is now at 84 Greenfield Road. That'll work, easy building. All right, and we already talked about the 100,000 right. yeah. real development thing. Um, anything else that we need to address that we didn't know about in time for this agenda? I think we got it all. Yeah. I, mean, I, I will just say I've, I've, I've been here a little over a month and I'm really enjoying the job and I just okay. wanna, you know, say thanks for the support, and uh, it's been uh, a lot of fun working with Christopher and everyone else in town, and uh, getting the lay of the land. And I feel like now I'm actually starting to make some some contributions and Love sort it. of taking some things over, and We're very grateful and it's to going have you. well. So, well, I'm glad you're yeah. feeling that way because Christopher's yeah. going to start assigning you things tomorrow. <laughs> oh, well, he already has. Don't worry about that. <laughs> and that's fine. That's and fine. I also want to acknowledge that. Uh, um, Greg is a multi-talented guy, and he performed with his band at uh, BBC the uh, Friday last week. My, oh, nice. my other life, yes. yes. Yeah, my, my other Very side great. Of some Steely Dan, some <laughs> Grateful Dead, some wonderful stuff. <laughs> well, thank oh, you. So yeah, you, you were uh, with Gil at the MMA conference, or the MMA uh, uh, Yeah, that's my right. other half right is right being yeah, yeah, the right. chair of the select board in Gil now. So. Right, this skewed out early, but yeah, <laughs> but, that's yeah. good. So, so I will just say that I'm going to be away nice. for two weeks, but I'm going to make a good effort to try and be here on October 30th at 4 p.m. since I'm going to be in a foreign country and it's like six hours ahead. Yep. So it'll be 10 o'clock for me if I dial in. Yep. Um, but I think we got enough good information tonight that we might be able to do it. Yeah. Make some quick decisions about this. Yep. Um, and so I apologize to anybody who thinks four o'clock's too early for a meeting, but uh, just I'll be at Hell 10 o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, all right, so if there's nothing else, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Make a motion to adjourn. Second. All those in favor? Trevor McDaniel, aye. Blake Gilmore, aye. Thank Tim you Hilchy, all for aye. attending. Appreciate it. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone online. <laughs>